on April 18th, 1999, the internet changed forever. Audio Hawks was born. That's what we're going to be talking about on today's video. All right, my friends, we are here with many of the Audioholic staff celebrating 25 years of being online. I wanted to bring on some of our regular contributors and writers. I'm going to be bringing on some guests, some really close manufacturing partners. We are having a contest giveaway. We're giving away seven prizes. You have to click on the link below in the description to register your email address we're going to be randomly picking winners in the continental United States based on questions that we ask. You email us from the email that you registered with your forum ID or your YouTube ID, and we'll match you and you will get that prize. And we'll be, we'll be bringing on each guest manufacturer that is sponsoring the prize in a little bit. But guys, I just wanted to start out with saying I am very appreciative of all the support that um, not only our readers and manufacturers has given over the years, but just our incredibly talented writing and writing staff and content producers. I could not do this all alone. I really appreciate all of you guys. And I want to hear from each and each one of you guys about how you found out about Audio Hawks originally. I know Shane Lee probably was just getting born when I started the website 25 years ago. But um, I want to hear your stories, how you discovered Audio Hawks, how Audio Hawks has helped you, and why you wanted to be a contributor to Audio so I'm going to start out with uh, Teo because you put together a little slide presentation and then we'll just you know, spend five minutes or so with each writer, James, Shane, Wade, Don, Xavier is, is Captain Analog and we'll just go. That's great. So Gene, I was a lurker in the early 2000s because I just couldn't get enough of really trying to learn about the audio hobby. I was a real big audio pal to channel guy and always believed in uh, the future of multi-channel. And looking online, I found Audioholics to really be the best uh, resource for me. So I consumed all the articles. It was just an insatiable appetite that I had to learn. And it really helped me in terms of setting up, uh, at that time, my 5.1 channel setup. And what really led me to being a contributor with Audioholics was SVS. You may remember back in the day, you had a couple of contests with SVS. Yes. And I was a finalist for um, one of the uh, SVS Ultra Towers. Uh, so I did a review along with a couple of other folks. And thanks to the Audioholics community, I was voted as uh, the best review. And that was really what led me to being a contributor for, I think it's going on 11 or 12 years at this point. And it's amazing, too, because when I met you, you actually knew the content management system that we use for Audioholics, which is very old and obscure. I was like, how the hell did I meet someone that knows this? And it's been awesome because you've been able to upload your own content, which helps us out as well. It's been great. I brought a little bit of that uh, technology geek from nearly three decades of, of technology expertise. And I think that's been a lot of fun. I've, I've really enjoyed doing a lot of the uh, immersive audio stuff, especially uh, streaming media and all those things where you have the intersection of audio and technology has just been a real breath of fresh air for me. So that's awesome. congratulations and happy birthday. 25 years, Dean. I know, man. It's crazy. Like when I started this 25 years ago, I actually did it. I did it more or less because I was maybe a year out of college and I just started working as a telecom engineer and I couldn't afford all the high end audio gear. So I'm like, what if I start something and I get companies to send me things to evaluate? And this is back in the day when the only competition online was print magazines that were switching over to, you know, the Internet. And it was hard at first. It took me maybe two or three years to go full time. But we were just owning SEO like Google Analytics. We were just we knew how to get the right page titles going. We knew how to just get really popular very quickly. Of course, G Google keeps changing the game with their algorithm updates and it's a different landscape today. But, you know, we progressed and we moved on and we do social media and we'll talk about that in the slide presentation. But YouTube is what really keeps audio hawks going. It's kind of the manufacturers want to see video content. Our readers don't always want to read James Larson 9,000 word reviews, but they'll watch a 15 or 20 minute video. <laughs> Sorry, James. I used to do those reviews too. <laughs> I like his Sorry. reviews. 
they're incredible. Your, your reviews are a benchmark in the industry for loudspeakers and subs, man. Oh, thank you very much, Gene. So why don't you, tell, James, why don't you talk about how you first discovered Audioholics and why you wanted to work for us? Um, I discovered it in Audioholics back in, I think, 2006, maybe 2007. Um, I was looking, I, I just wanted to add a subwoofer for my, to my system and I just did Google searches and stuff like that. I didn't have a lot of money, so I wanted the most bang for my buck. Mm -hmm. And like, it just, it seemed like a good place. The people there knew what they were talking about. And so like, I based my purchase on, on that. And then I, I bought it and I left for a few years and then, and then I wanted to upgrade years later. And I just went back to Audi Hall. So it was a great resource, you know, then, and like, I've kind of stuck with it ever since. And, um. Yeah, that's that's how I got into Audio Hawks. Just looking for subs. That's it, you know. That's awesome. <laughs> Shane Shane is a big Swifty. <laughs> <laughs> for a little Swifty. <laughs> little Shane, Shane why, don't, why don't you talk next? Um, I'll tell you how I discovered you. I think I was doing a, a YouTube search on something with fast food or whatever, and you did this review. You were comparing all these different chicken sandwiches, and I'm like <laughs> – this dude's hilarious. Like you bought a chicken sandwich from Wendy's from Chick-fil-A. Like you had like five different ones and you're sitting there and you're tasting it and breaking it down. And then I went and you, your channel was called spare change at the time, which I thought was a great name. I don't know why you switched it to Shane. Oh, but gosh. I thought it was a great name, but you know, you started pimping out, you got the trend off, you got, you know, you got all the Mac daddy Macintosh gear. Of course you're a cable soothsayer. You love to, you love audio quest, but we won't <laughs> judge you on that. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought your presentation skill, dude, is second to none, man. You're a fucking smooth operator. And I knew that I had to get you to do videos for us because you were going to up the quality of the of the look of our videos and the style. So it's been awesome working with you, even though sometimes you can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Well, Gene, congrats. I hope to uh, really bring bring some more style to your channel. More style. Um uh, so yeah, so Gene found me. I didn't find Gene. Uh, I you knew about way. me though. Come on, dude. <laughs> wow. Uh, I remember Gene back in my uh, early SVS days with the little cylinder, the, the yeah. big cylinder towers. Uh, I think you guys did a review or somebody did a review on him. And uh, from then on, I was like, oh, these guys are like, you know, one of the premier AV websites. And uh, I've been following Gene and the crew ever since. And then I became uh youtube sensation in my own world and then gene found me of course and then i said oh wow this is pretty cool I, gene's reaching out maybe i'll join the crew as well and uh here i am uh up in the game for audioholics yeah. you know well, i was a little hesitant because all these guys over here do all these like fancy schmancy measurements and then gene's like why don't you come over here don't do your measurements just talk about your sub your subjective take on things i was like oh dude these guys are gonna hate me because i'm not a measurement person well let's um, be honest dude you do excellent in-room measurements like uh you know how to calibrate a system really well I, I don't think you sometimes give yourself enough credit like you just you get multi-sub going the shit you're doing now with your own theater you're building most of it by yourself hats off to you man that's i know you have a really extensive experience with magnolia so you've been around it's yeah. not like you just started a YouTube channel as a hobbyist. You actually were in the field. You were working for a professional organization. So you have experience. Yeah, I've been around electronics forever since like, listen, when I was in high school. I mean, just like a retail space, like um, just selling stuff. So I've always been, I've always seen like, you know, products change and everything like that. Um, so, you know, it's good now that I'm in this industry working with uh, Audioholics and all that stuff. So I have even more reach with other brands. So I can share my experiences with you guys, the uh, the normal folks out there. Awesome. So Wade, I think on this panel right now, you are the oldest, or you've been with Audioholics the longest. I think you started <clears throat> out. I like oldest. <laughs> I mean, I might, yeah, I think Don wins that one, but. <laughs> Wait, I think what? you started out, what, in 2004? 2004 was the first article published. Um, I, I guess the way I discovered Audioholics back when the internet was young, I was working on my own sort of hobby audio website. Um, yep. Certainly no credentials in that area whatsoever, but uh, uh, HD was getting big. Dolby Digital was getting uh, progressively cheaper, and I just felt like I wanted to present this every man point of view 
And in my search for inbound links to, uh, you know, lend some authority, I uh, discovered Audioholics and uh, quickly got sucked into the, I, I really appreciated the objectivist sort of message, the uh, fact that it was based on measurements and extremely authoritative uh, knowledge behind the science and everything. And uh, I've just never stopped learning. And I've been uh, with Audioholics in one capacity or another ever since. Well, you do a lot of behind the scenes work that people may not be familiar with. First of all, I think your editorials, your news scoops are second to none, man. You have such a great style in the way you write them, the way you choose your words and the way you oh, research. You. I think the last article you did for us was about streaming services that got 40,000 views in a day and a half. Like it went viral. It was everywhere. And it was just That's so well good documented. Here. Yeah, it was awesome, man. It was real. We got a great traffic bump from that. But Wade also does our newsletter. So we have a weekly newsletter that goes out to 70,000 opt-in subscribers. And those are pruned because MailChimp is fierce on making sure they're active email addresses. And yeah, I think, exactly. Wade, when you took over the newsletter, our open rate went from maybe like 12% to like 25, 30% consistently now. Yeah, we're having around 25 consistent, which is good. Good. It's good stuff. Yeah, you do a great job with the newsletter. He handles our banner campaigns. I mean, you just, you do a lot of busy work for us. And you do I really a little behind the scenes, which is, yeah. which is nice. I've kind of used to, uh, like, like you guys were, as you mentioned earlier, killing it in SEO right from the early days. And that's sort of, I've done a little bit of that for other websites, a little bit of a content marketing and whatnot. So, yep. so I know you guys have, are already uh, well acquainted with, with it. And uh, if I can help out in any way, I'm glad to do so. Awesome. So I want to address this quick question because it keeps coming up. Very unfortunate about Hugo. I just want to give you guys an update. So what happened was Hugo was a test pilot in the Air Force and they were trying out some new space plane and something happened where it was accelerating too quickly and it, he went into some type of time loop. And the best I heard was he wound up in some type of alternate future, like thousands of years into the future. And when he landed his craft on Earth, the planet was ruled by apes. So he just decided to stay because he felt like this was his home. King. He, could, he could be the king there. He could work out with them. So I wish him well. I hope he's doing great over there. And maybe one day we'll see him come back. I just don't know. Caesar. <laughs> and with that, we'll lead to Don. Don, get her. Done, Don. Um, so being an audio nerd and selling designing systems, you know, in the 90s and the 2000s, I subscribed to pretty much every magazine then as we all got on the internet i discovered audioholics i'm like wow this is really cool and would actually use some of your reviews and articles in my sales presentation then many years ago um control four approached me said hey we want to put a control four system in for audioholics and i was like wow i thought you lived in like new york or something i didn't even know you live right down the road so i went over and um I was super excited to to meet you know the audio godfather and we just hit it off and wound up talking for three hours about classic audio pieces that we owned or wish we still owned and and he's like hey you want to shoot a video and not long after that we made the inf infamous why do audio <laughs> audio files hate bows yes you got three seven hundred and fifty thousand views or something on it <laughs> and all kinds of hate on it and um you know it just kind of went from there we uh you know, we just all became a family and I met and got to be friends with everybody from the crew. And just uh, if you guys only knew the quality of human beings and individuals other than Shane um, that, that, <laughs> that we have here and the passion. I mean, when we talk, it's about either science fiction or audio. I mean, you know, it's kind of nerdy, but I'm super honored to be, you know, counted among these awesome people, I mean, especially, you know, Larson's reviews, man. The guy. Yeah, oh, so. no, Thank Don. It's been, Don, it's been great since I met you, man. That you know, we clicked right away. We had a lot yeah. of similar viewpoints on things, and some things we don't always agree on. But we're always, you know, it's always good to have point counterpoint. Yeah. But I, I just, you know, I appreciate your experience in the industry. You've been in this field yeah. as long or longer than me, but you've actually been in the field servicing and installing yeah. and integrating. I think we need more of the integrator's perspective for consumers. I, I agree. You know, somebody said, you know, 
lots and lots of experience doesn't make you better at it. And I, and I, I know that that's true. Lots and lots of experience helps in certain avenues, but there's some guys that have been in this business three or four years that are just incredibly knowledgeable about it, but little details and little things and knowing that when you put speakers, same speaker in 10 different rooms, you're going to get 10 different sounds and things like that. So um, I've just, I've learned so much, you know, from Matt Pose. I wish Matt was here. I think he's out teaching classes right now. Yeah. It's CDA um, training. Yeah. I'm one of my best friends. Uh, Teo's. I talked to him about life and everything, um, you know, it, and, and I love Wade's work. Um, James is awesome. Xavier's a good friend of mine and kind of brought him into the audioholics fold. And I tell you what, this guy is the, the turntable guru. He puts his sauce on it. Man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, didn't, it, didn't your turntable sound like five times better after he got done with it? It was crazy. Dude, Xavier came over my old house and no joke, man. I met him at uh, Florida Audio Expo the mm -hmm. first year, I think. And let me just tell you something about Xavier. And then, Xavier, you could tell your story as well. Xavier met me because he recognized my my wife's voice in the background of a noisy trade show. That's how good his hearing is. <laughs> That's impressive. That and your wife as well, Lori. She recognized Bertha's voice, right? So that was that was amazing. I mean, that was just awesome. But we hit it off right away. So Xavier comes over my old house, and I've got a Marantz TT fifteen S one, and I complained to him. I go. I like the the turntable, but I noticed, you know, there's a lot of rumble in the woofers and the center image isn't quite where it needs to be. Like when I switch from CD to vinyl, it sounds like the vocals are in dead center. They're more spread out. So he pulls out this big freaking industrial case. He's got these goggles. <laughs> and <laughs> like He's got, he, he looked like Locutus of Borg. He had a freaking laser coming out of his eye. And he spent, <laughs> Xavier, I mean, tell me I'm not exaggerating. You spent at least four hours at my house calibrating that platter. It was way off. It was way off. Yeah, about about four hours, yeah. I thought he was well, you, 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 a baby we, or something. I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, well, you left me alone up there, and I just worked that in. I did, it, man. I think we went out. We, we went everything. to the wall. We come back. Xavier's still up there. The room is all smoky. But you know what happened afterwards was I heard magic. And in fact, uh, we did comparisons of, of various different phono preamps, um, expensive phono preamps. And my, my Anthem STR really held its candle. That thing had a seriously good phono preamp. But then the cool thing is I took one of my favorite CDs, uh, Brothers in Arms from Dire Straits, which is a classic album. It's, I think it's all done digitally. Am I right, Xavier? That was a digital recording. From, yeah, yeah. So you brought over a 45, which is like two discs. So it's it's recorded faster for better quality. And we level Probably. match. And we, yeah, and we level match and we compared. And honestly, I preferred the vinyl. And I know people are going to give me daggers for that. But I actually really liked the vinyl experience on that album, which surprised me because it's originally a digital recording. It was exponentially better when he did his work on it. Like, there yeah, was when you calibrated it exponentially like going from a cassette to a CD thank you player, like, <laughs> really yep. was and, and that's the problem people, anybody that poo poos vinyl they just never heard a proper setup and it's it's really instrumental it's a lot of incatricies i can't even say the word right now intricacies it, in, yeah thanks intricacies. and uh and, and you have to do maintenance on it and you have to clean the records. It's a pain in the ass, but you know what? It's a different experience because like my wife says, she likes to sit down and engage with the music as opposed to skipping around. You know, I love streaming. I do most of my music listening with streaming, but there's something different about the tactile experience of picking up a record, caring for it, cleaning it, putting it down on the platter, and then just hearing two really good speakers and how, much incredible sound you can get out of a physical media like that i love it I so love with it. that i want well, you to you... do an introduction xavier well actually i heard about you over a decade ago and i was no longer than that back when hugo was in town yep. and uh and i just happened to come across it on youtube based on uh looking for information for uh, an array of subwoofers and from there, everything I saw on your channel, I bought it. <laughs> and nice. then little by little, I kept learning and reading up on you guys and everything. And then the trade show came up. And I've always worked with turntables, but I was so interested in the home theater aspect of this. 
and and room treatments and everything. I'm a contractor by trade also. <clears throat> and yes. I, I build theater rooms. I build two channel stereo uh, rooms and everything. And uh, I just wanted to keep expanding my knowledge. And you guys were it. You guys were, to me, you are the godfather of audio and on YouTube when it comes to all this. And it was awesome. Once I went to the the rest of the story, you pretty much told it. I went to the to the trade to the show, and it, and I got the pleasure of meeting such an extended family of my own, which is yes. all you guys. And I really appreciate everything that you done for me. It was really uh, helped my own business of the turntables that I have here locally, and has uh, helped uh, expand my my knowledge of pretty much everything because I get more work more practice you expand your knowledge and that's how it is i was able to write a couple of articles for you guys and yep. some reporting when we had that huge fire on the uh uh for the record labels and yeah, um, yeah. that was tower record right? right correct yeah i was up in canada and you call me up hey man this happened can you come in can you help me out with this so if you're in central florida and need your record player dialed in yes get him up Someone's asking where you're from originally. I thought it was Puerto Rico. Am I correct? Well, my dad's from Spain, and my mom uh, was born over here. And uh, but I was born in Puerto Rico, and I was raised over there. So right. I'm like a big mutt. You sound like Puss in Boots. I'm not gonna lie. Puss in Boots. <laughs> Puss in Boots? Puss Puss in <laughs> hey, my beautiful lady. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, Teo, I'm going so to give you. I'm going to give you the uh, floor here. It's it's always interesting to hear other people present the history of Audioholic. So, have at it, man. man. All right, so Gene, I have to tell you, you will not win any awards for web design, but the great <laughs> news is that you absolutely get better with age. And I think that everything speaks here. So we're 25 years today. And if we look at, I, I think, all the comparative sites, which are all great, right? Home Theater, Hi-Fi, Home Theater Review. Really, when it comes to who's the granddaddy, Audioholic just ranks up there. So congratulations on a wonderful 25-year anniversary. Uh, so I think that you probably did what? You you found the NASA font back in 99 <laughs> and you figured, let me try to make an audio Holics logo, but yes. great things come from humble beginnings. Even if you look at Amazon or Craigslist or any of these sites, they had their humble beginnings, but thank goodness somebody did something for you in 04. So things got a little better. You were still confused about your logo a bit, yes. but we did start to get a little better. Um, but even from that early time, you knew what it was all about. I mean, the AVR 3805, all those great products, you were right there and leading the way. And then finally, we started to get a little bit familiar in 07. So mm -hmm. this was a really great uh, advantage where you did that. And finally, in 2015, I think you really hit a great stride with the way the look and feel of the site is. And then you did a couple of more upgrades. And then we were finally in 2024. So that's where we are today. It's been a, a great just ride. So, just so everybody knows, we are Ooh. heading for a major site redesign, the biggest one we've had since probably the days when it was black and white. Um, we are going, we're moving to WordPress and it's gonna be the biggest endeavor we've done. And I'm, it's a risk, but I think it's time. I think we need to adapt because Google algorithms keep changing so much and I need a content management system that can keep up with the algorithm changes. Well, it'll be great. But, you know, you've been venturing on social media. So when it comes to where you are with YouTube, I mean, what, 198,000, almost 200,000 subscribers at this point mm -hmm. and 140,000 subscribers on Facebook. So you've really been killing it on social media as well. I mean, the reach of Audioholics is not just in the numbers, I think that's the raw statistics, but it's actually the quality of the audience. So it's everything from folks who are audio and video engineers, you know, folks from Skywalker Sound, people who have mixed uh, some of the greatest movie, uh, uh, what, what do we want to call them? The, the greatest movie epics that we all love are Audioholics fans. So Gene, yeah. the numbers go far deeper than that. Art singers, we've had, you know, major recording artists on. Oh yeah, we had, you know, people from Genesis, we've had Marillion, we've had, Porcupine Tree, we've had Dominic Fia May, Gavin Harrison. 
You know what? You know what blows me away, and and this is not a, no, a knock on the competition, but there's print magazines like Sterafile, Found and Vision. These guys are huge conglomerates, right? They have lots of backing, lots of money, yet they just don't have the social media presence of Audioholics. And you look at the difference in views in YouTube. Look at Facebook. And my wife is just doing a kick-ass job on managing Facebook, man. She just has the pulse. When I was running Facebook on my own, I do a post and get no engagement. When she does a post, we'll get thousands of likes. We'll get you know tens to hundreds of comments just engaged. And so many people are finding us just through social media before they even go to the editorial site. Well, Gene, behind every great man is a better woman. And yes. with any anniversary, <laughs> Bertha gets it. The biggest applause. <laughs> But Gene, yeah. it doesn't stop there. You did a couple of <laughs> other things. And we Wait, want to talk about more. contributions and controversies. Mm -hmm. I think what really put Audioholics on the map was you were not afraid to go after the big boys. And when it came to the big boys, there was probably nobody better than Lexicon, right? The, under the Harmon Luxury brand. Yes. And we all loved our Oppo Blu-ray players at the time. And you exposed that, hey, if you're buying a Lexicon BD30, what you're really buying is a rebagged BDP83. But it didn't stop there. You went so far as to actually analyze the THX certification of that player. Yes. And you exposed anomalies that really had ripples in the industry. Uh, what you exposed with Lexicon has its own Wikipedia article. So for those who are interested in that, and it just got picked up by trade mags, you were interviewed and you were congratulated um, left, right, up and down, weren't you? It was crazy, man. When That year when we broke that story. So before we got that sample and I asked the marketing manager of Harm and I said, I looked at the player. I go, is this your player or is it an Oppo? And he, they swore up and down it was their player from the ground up. I'm like, you do realize we're going to take it apart. We're going to do measurements. They said, yeah, that's fine. They sent it to us. And one of my guys got it in who's not with us anymore. And he he started playing with it. He goes, this feels like an Oppo. I go, pop the lid off. He pops the lid off. He looks at the internals and then he pops his Oppo off. They literally took the entire Oppo player with the chassis itself, put it into a nice Lexicon chassis and rebadged it for an extra $3,000. And it had the old firmware that wasn't that didn't have the proper analog based management that Oppo fixed over the years. So that was jarring. And I sent, as you guys know, I send my copies of every article that deals with technical measurements or analysis to the manufacturers before we publish for fact checking to make sure we got it right. And I didn't hear a peep out of them. So they didn't deny or they didn't agree with the content. They didn't say anything. I published it and I just thought it would be, you know, a casual article, but it went viral. We were getting 100,000 views a day on that article for like over a month and a half. So when I went to Cedia that year, random people were coming up to me, like even magazines like Wired Magazine and stuff, they were coming up and saying, I can't believe that awesome work you did on, on the lexicon. I was, I was happy, but I was scared at the same time because I didn't want to like make enemies of Harmon. Get but, the, <laughs> but the great thing about it was the engineers were like on my side. They were like, yeah, you know, it's great that you expose that. And they discontinued the product right after that. And the THX certification went away from it as well. And over the years, I've been working very closely with Harmon. You know, I've had Floyd Tool, Sean Olive, Todd Welty, all those guys, incredible scientists. They've contributed editorials to us. They've been on our live streams. So it took a couple of years to kind of get over the awkwardness of it, but I thought overall it was it was a good thing to do because I've seen this so many times. I've seen it, Don, you've seen this back in the day when Pioneer uh, laser disc players, they would just put those into a Macintosh chass chassis. Oh, and yeah. Charge. yeah they, the manufacturers have done that for years. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was, it was a fun, I guess it was a fun experience. I mean, it was, it, people learned a lot of lessons. Look, nobody's making Blu-ray players anymore, right? <laughs> well, Gene, you really took it on the chin, and I've told you this before, but I think people need to hear it. I, I have had uh, that president of one of the uber high-end manufacturers that calls Gene a giant killer, and they're always afraid of you know what happens with Audioholics because not afraid to just really say, hey, this is the way that it is. We're out there. We want to talk about that, and we want to protect the consumer. So kudos for what you've been able to do. Thanks. And, and, you know, I, I think we skipped one of the biggest controversies of uh, Audioholics, and maybe it's in your slides, I don't know, but my biggest shtick about 
pursuing the truth and audio has always been debunking BS and cables. And I, mm -hmm. over the years, when I started doing that, when I used to work at a tel I used to work at a government defense contractor and I had access to all of the test equipment so I could bring in wires and do analysis on them. I started seeing what a bunch of BS this is with skin effect and strand jumping and elevating your cables. And I would do all the science. I would, I would calculate the dielectric absorption factor and all this stuff and just show how ridiculously overstated some of the manufacturers, particularly AudioQuest, not trying to pick on them per se, because they've never been mean to me in any way, but they have the most pseudoscience out of any manufacturer I've ever seen. But they also have the largest uh, retail network. So they are a very successful company. And, and some of their products are really legitimately well engineered. It's just when they start slapping batteries on it, it gets a little ridiculous, as you guys have seen with my video. It acts as an RF antenna. So when I started doing that, I got a lot of threats, not from them, but from other audio companies, cable companies. Um, I've had calls in my house. I've had people tell me I'm never going to succeed in the industry. But I just kept doing it. I was like, I don't care. I just want to get the information out. I want to use my engineering degree for something good in audio because there's hardly any checks and balances. And now, of course, we've got, you know, we've got a group of, of YouTubers that are doing great work like Aaron, you know, Aaron's Audio Corner. He does good analysis and measurements on speakers. So there are people that are being more receptive to getting the facts out, which I've, I would like to work collectively as a community because the measurements aren't everything. Tao, you said it best. The measurements are for dating. The listening is for marriage. That's right. right. That's exactly what I think the Audioholics perspective is. Use your <laughs> measurements to choose who you're going to date and then use your ears to decide who you're going to marry. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll let you continue on. All right. Well, let's talk about contributions. It is amazing. And I only chose a few where Audioholics and Gene, you really in particular, have actually moved the industry. So here's a, gr a great example of how you have been such a great partner with manufacturers, where in this article back in 2003, you called out that this Yamaha AVR had a 90 hertz crossover yeah. and you actually got Yamaha to change their engineering and design and future products. Oh, yeah. So back then they were doing 90 hertz crossovers for generations of receivers. Look, Don could attest the Z1 was a masterpiece. Oh, the killer, killer, killer. Man. Masterpiece of a product. The sound on it, the, the remote control, the raw power. You don't get receivers with that kind of raw power today because they're stuffing so many channels to do Atmos. That thing was all channels driven. When it was 100 watts, that was all channels driven. That was a real power amp in it. And it was beautifully crafted. And I'm not knocking Yamaha in any way on that. I think I'm a huge Yamaha fan. That's one of the reasons why I got started in this industry was just because of my love for a brand like them. But I kept saying, why are you sticking with 90 hertz? We, you know, we need to have variable crossover ability. And finally, after three or four reviews of complaining about it, they called me and they said, we're going to change that. We're going to give you variable crossovers and they did that and then i want then i asked for multiple independent subwoofer outs of course danon was always the most progressive at making changes when i would request it so danon was the first to do the multiple independent subwoofer outs i think it was on the 5803 but then i also wanted um some other changes on that as well so back when danon came out with the 3803 or 3805 there was it was a seven channel amp and I'm like, I want to see if I could buy amp with those extra two channels. So I used a preamp outs into a unused input and I jerry rigged it and I used a um, voltmeter to calculate the gain of zone two. And I found it was like a 2.5 dB correction to get it to unity gain. And I buy amped the first AVR that's ever been done. I put it in the review. That review got so many views, especially on the forum. I think that forum thread had hundreds of thousands of views and like, I can't even count the pages, right? So Denon saw this, so like, we're gonna make this a standard feature in, in receivers going forward. There you go, the buy amp mode. Yeah, they did. So yeah. They were the first. Then I went, I called Yamaha, I go, I go, Yamaha, Denon's got you beat again. You gotta be proactive. You gotta get on the game with this. So then they released a version of buy amp and then Ankyo released a version of buy amp now it's on every AVR, and 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 in some aspects, I I kind of created a monster because I don't like to see it on five hundred dollar receivers when they have little wimpy power supplies, but on flagship kind of receivers like the fifty eight hundred three, fifty eight hundred five, the RX Z one, 
Uh, Don, the Marantz SR-14, you remember that bad, bad Yeah, the SR-18, SR-19. Or the Integra Research, that was a masterpiece. Yeah, for the first generation of Integra surround THX receivers that were introduced in 299 or I think 99, they came yep. from Integra Research. Yeah, that, those were all killer amps. It made sense to do buy amp on that if you weren't using those other channels. So I don't know. I just, I thought that was awesome that the companies listen and we always, you know, we always try to give good feedback and I'm just honored that, you know, the engineers really respect what we do and they look at our test reports. Some of them, like even the guys at Denon, they bought the same exact audio precision that I have. So when I send them my measurements, I could send them my audio precision file. They could replicate it. All right. It's great. And speaking of, another thing that they did for you is the Dolby Surround Up Mixer. And I think this deserved yes. uh, all of the audio community needs to personally thank you for advocating for this. So I'm showing yeah. here the screenshot from my Focal uh, Astral 16 from the Storm Audio uh, OS. But Gene, the center channel spread, why don't you talk about that and how important that has been? So I, you know, I've always been an advocate of if you're going to up mix music um, before Dolby Surround before Dolby Atmos came out, we had a really good op mixes. We had the Dolby ProLogic 2X Music and the Dolby ProLogic 2X Cinema. DTS had the same thing. Incredible up mixes to take two channels or 5.1 and up mix it to as many speakers as you have. And the music for cinema mode, <clears throat> excuse me, the music mode would basically allow the, the main speakers to preserve their stereo image. And it would put just a little bit of uh, fill into the center channel. When you went into cinema mode, it would extract the common information, dump it into the center. That way, when you were listening to two channel kind of stream, uh, two channel shows or whatever, you would have that anchored center image, especially if you were sitting off axis, you were sitting to a far left or far right seat, you would still have a safe, stable image. But it wasn't good for stereo, especially if you're sitting at MLP, because it destroys your phantom center. When you set up a really good pair of two two speakers in a room with good acoustics and the image right, you get that really strong phantom center and it sounds like there's a center channel on where there isn't. Well, when Dolby came out with Atmos, they came out with the Dolby Surround Up Mixer, which was supposed to be an improved Kodak for up mixing over the last generation. Some ways it was, other ways it wasn't. I found some artifacting in that over the years and I think they've done firmware updates to kind of fix that a little bit. But they always had a center spread option, which would allow you to go from what I was talking about, where it would allow you to preserve the center image or the or the main image by turning center spread on and turning it off would be more like the cinema mode. Well, what happened a generation later, and I, got, I found this out from my brother because my brother Dom bought a Denon receiver and I was trying to help him set it up in Oregon over the phone. And I'm telling him, he goes, it doesn't sound right when I turn on Dolby Surround up mix, like everything's coming from the center. I go, well, you got to turn on center spread. And he's going through the menus and he can't find it. And, and my brother's not the most electrically illiterate, electrically literate person. He's a eco ecologist. He's the top in his field in that. He's a scientist, but he's not an electronics guy. So I just figured it was him. So I finally got to look and we did a Zoom call and he showed me the menus and the center spread is gone. So I contact Denon and they told me it's some type of licensing agreement with Dolby. If you do virtualized height channels, you can't have center spread with it. So all these new receivers were coming out with these virtualized height channels, which I don't even think anybody uses, to be honest with you. Don, you're in the field. How many people are using the virtualized never, setting? Dolby? Never. Never, right? Nobody so it was, a stupid, it was a stupid feature that took away a really useful feature. So I did a video on it, and I, you know, I, I, I talked about this online. It got lots of views. I had people sign petitions to bring center, center spread back. And then Denon figured out a way to do it on their AVRs. There's still some companies that don't have it. I think Yamaha still doesn't have it, unfortunately. And I Anthony yeah, definitely doesn't, doesn't have it. it. But then they Anthem is uh, hopefully going to bring it after our conversation with them. Yes, but they, to their defense, they have a music mode that's based on the Haffler circuit. It does left minus right, and that still works good for uh, music up mixing. But the other thing that was happening at the same time was they stopped cross mixing. So Dolby wanted really, they really wanted to restrict anybody from using the competitive codecs with their, with their native content. And that kind of pissed me off. I'm like, why shouldn't you have the chance to up mix to any format, whether you like Oro or DTSX or you like Dolby, you should have that opportunity to do that. So I did another video on that 
And um, I posted this whole thing about it. It was another thing that went viral and we got the cross mixing put back. Dolby, you know, took away, they basically recanted that they wouldn't do that. And then unfortunately there was a downside to that. So there are some YouTubers that think that it's better to take an Atmos mix, play it in 5.1 and up mix it to Oro. So you're basically destroying the immersive soundtrack doing it in 5.1 and then you mix it to Oro and it's just putting sound constantly up in the high channels. I don't agree with that, but if, but Don, again, this is something you could attest to because you're in the field. How many times have you set up systems where people were like, I can't hear my surrounds. And then you go and put it in all channel stereo and they love it. I more times than I can count. Um, because people <laughs> are like, I paid for seven speakers. I want to hear them. You know, I'm like, you try to explain to no, Mr. And Mrs. Customer, you know, the material is only there when it's designed to be there for it. I don't care. I want to hear it. So yeah, so up. that's kind of the that's kind of the mentality was, you know, people because there are some bad atmos mixes that don't use objects in the heights, especially through streaming. We had John Trownweiser on. Um, he's the guy that mixed the soundtracks for Indiana Jones and some of the Star Wars movies. And he was talking about how streaming services really crunched the um, bandwidth of the high channels, which is unfortunate, which is why you need a Kaleidoscape or you need a, um, a Blu-ray. Well, they piggyback it like they used to do um, on Dolby Surround and ProLogic. So that's basically through the PCM stream, they piggyback the height channels on top of that. And you yeah. only have so much bandwidth in the pipe to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Gene, I'm gonna bring you on to the next thing. I, I do. I didn't have a slide for it, but I do wanna mention, now that it's coming more to the foray, when you and I were down at uh, the uh, Sound United event with Denon and Marantz, we were asked by the product engineering team some of the things that we would love to see. So we said, yeah. we'd love to see Dirac and we'd love to see Rune on those products so i don't know if it was our comments but we'd like to think we influenced that as well and then of course honest power so this has been a big thing that you've been after manufacturers and you've made some headway so this will kind of close that off so we can go to the next segment yeah, yeah so, so i know i think it's worth it was in the same room that's weird Shane. that's not me <laughs> okay sorry about that so yeah i noticed um i noticed that when dolby atmos receivers came out that was a real problem um where the power supplies were shrinking to add more channels and add more features and the receiver companies were getting crafty they weren't giving you two channels driven full bandwidth at a low distortion level they were giving you two channel, one channel driven at 10% distortion at six ohms instead of eight ohms. And they were just inflating it. And when I did the calculations, I'm like, this is almost double the power of what is actually truthful if you were going to rate it per FTC with two channels driven. So I created this whole campaign, Truth and Power, and I had people sign a petition. And it's changed the way manufacturers are rating their receivers because like some of the Ankios and some of the Sonys were doing this one channel driven crap. Even Denon had the sticker on the front. And I'm like, just get rid of that sticker. You know, the home theater in the boxes were the worst. They were adding up all the channels as that they were all channels driven. And you get a Sony home theater in a box, it would say 1200 watts, <laughs> which is not. <laughs> well, you've made a difference in that too. So I don't know if that uh, is a good segue, but we should also talk about the fact that the 25th anniversary coincides with another milestone, and that's your 50th birthday that we celebrated a few months ago. Yes. So we had some great fun and time. You had a gangster theme party, and there's Bertha. I don't know if you want to bring her back up on screen or not. And we had some of the usual suspects at the party. <laughs> <laughs> so Don, yeah, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring Bertha over to my chair because we can't bring any more people onto StreamYard. So I want to give a little introduction to my wife, the one that's been the most supportive, imaginable person, the one that's been putting up with me for 25 years. And and I talked about how you're just killing it for us on social media. So happy to help. Why don't you talk a little bit about how I started Audio Hawks because we were dating at the time, right? Yes, we were. Hi, everybody. Nice to Hello, see we're getting together. Big well, hug. I know. Well, that is true. We started dating back in ninety and in ninety seven, and literally within the first year, he was talking about the idea of one day making his hobby dreams come true. 
So he had a couple of friends that he was at the time really close to, and they started working on the whole idea. And that's when he came up with the name of Passion for Audio, Audioholics. And it kind of all started from there. And I saw him starting with the website when it was just like a chat type forum. It wasn't even really a website. I remember him trying to get some business out of it with different, um, I forgot who the name of the guy was. Well, it started out with uh, Aragon with Tony Federici. Yes. Yeah, he's no longer with us. Amazing guy. I got to meet his son, extremely friendly. And it just made the whole idea of pursuing this whole business a positive reality. So that's when Gene started getting really excited about maybe this is going somewhere else. And it did. And we're still here. <laughs> and actually, my wife was the one that convinced me to leave my rate, my uh, job at Raytheon because I was double dipping. I was working during the day and then working on content at night. And she's like, you can't keep doing this. Like it was burning me out. Yeah, it was too much. Yeah. Don't uh, pick one. I'll be there to support whatever you need. Um, at the time, I was actually in between two different things with my nursing and work and school. So I told him, I'm just going to dedicate to school, get my master's while you do your thing full time and I'll be there to support you. I took some classes in accounting and it worked out wonderful because I could do work from home and be with the family and the kids and be a little more proactive, which I love. You know what the great thing about birthday is too? And, and this is a recommendation <laughs> to anybody that is wanting to get equipment in their house and they have a spouse that is resistant to it. You got to meet your spouse. You got to meet your spouse before you marry them. You got to, you got to condition them. You are an audioholic, <laughs> right? You have to get them into the audio because she's always been into good audio. In fact, Don, when we were designing the audio Hulk smart house, I wanted to put in walls in the family room. And she's like, I don't want in walls in there. I want to see the speaker. Yeah. Right. You remember that? I wanted to marry her after that. <laughs> <laughs> I love to visualize see the textures i'm a, I'm a very visual type person so i want to see the actual item that's making the sound be beautiful and magical i don't want to just see a hole in the wall i i love art so it's a big thing for me to be able to see the piece of resistance in front of my face and I know. That, that's weird for a lot of people but i always been like that even when i was younger i remember for christmas my uncle asked me um don't you want to have a boombox in your room so you can listen to some audio? Go, you mean to derogated audio because that sounds like horrible, like hell. No, I don't. Thank you. <laughs> One day I'll be able to buy my own system. I'll be, I'm happy with the vinyl player you have. And this, he had Aww. two many, uh, tower speakers at the time. And I was happy going in that room just to do that. I don't care for the boombox sound, none of that stuff. I love vinyl and I love actual speakers producing the sound, not a little thing. <laughs> plug it in and all that so yeah well again hon i really appreciate your support and what you've done on social media for us is unbelievable she's got the pulse on the industry you know you really do well i enjoy interacting with people and, and i try to make it positive and not judgmental if you want to call it that way i just want to see what else everybody has different likes different tastes so no we're all not gonna agree but it's nice to showcase what's out there and what people do like and how can maybe make it a little better if you're willing to uh, learn and go for it. That's my whole perspective and this positive of social media. Yeah. No, it's awesome. And, you know, it's I always consider Audio Hulk's kind of a family, you know, with, with you guys have been with us for so long. Yes. You guys are some of my best friends I've ever had in my life. Um, I really appreciate the support. And I the same thing with the manufacturers, man. I try to build relationships. It's not just a business thing. I build friendships. And I try to work with legitimately good companies that are passionate about audio. That's really why we started this whole thing. Um, did you have another couple of slides? Because I'm going to start bringing on some guests. Yeah, okay. just let's just, is this uh, some fan stuff <laughs> from the party? It was That's great. Awesome. By the way, Bertha, you are an absolutely amazing entertainer. <laughs> I Thank am. You. I enjoy it. I used to do event planning for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and I did a lot of big weddings and things like that. But uh, I not only able to do it anymore, so I enjoy doing it with the family and friends. Oh, man. My, my wife just exposed me. Yeah, I did. I got her. I, yeah, I got a subwoofer for my wife at our first Christmas together. That is awesome. Was it sure that went over great. Was that the Paralicens? I uh, know. We'll, we'll talk about that one in an offline. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say something real quick about what Gene does. You know, 
reviewing a product and just, you know, if it's good or bad or poo-pooing it or whatever. But if you think about the industry and the quality, we're in a renaissance period in the industry, meaning yep. it's hard to buy a bad speaker. It's hard to buy a bad receiver or amplifier. And Gene, mm -hmm. to my amazement, has worked with manufacturers to go, hey, you've got this problem, you've got that problem, and, and let them fix the problem instead of just poo-pooing on them, you know, yeah. to, to self-gratify. And, and in turn, any manufacturer worth having and owning have been extremely receptive. I mean, he's on the direct line with engineers in Japan and, and that's lifted the industry up more than in, I can't even tell you how much it's lifted the industry up. And a lot of things that you see now are directly from audioholics and, testing and, and interaction with manufacturers. I mean, that's strong. That's strong as death because it's easy to listen to something and, and talk about what you like, what you don't like, but to measure it at the level he does um, and the idiosyncrasies of each piece. And I mean, that's, that's a big deal. And I hope, and you all benefit, everybody watching and listening has benefited probably in some way, whether it's Denon Morant's Anthem, um, Yamaha, especially, I mean, you know, the relationship with Yamaha, he even let Kumasaba sound spill sake all over his theater chair. <laughs> <laughs> Banzai! So, that I mean, awesome. that's just an observation from coming in, being in the industry so long and not really understanding a lot of things. And I've been educated on it. So, you know, kudos to you, brother, on doing that. I really you know, appreciate it. Seriously. That, and that's legit. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So we have the final edition for Audio Hulk staff that's going to be on today. And and Wade, he's got you beat. Tony Leota has been with oh Audio Hulk <laughs> the longest. Tony. He, Tony. He's my, he's my blood. He's not your, he's Tony, not Tony, your friend. He's my cousin. And Tony, you've been with Audio Hulks probably since what, 2002 or three? Yeah, it's been uh, about 20 years. It was 2004. We're sitting in your living room. And you go, uh, you know, this, this website thing, it's really blowing up and I could really use some help. So, you know, being we're both kind of science minded individuals, we sat down and I said, well, whatever I whatever I can do for you, you know, you, you throw it at me. And that's kind of the way it's gone for the last 20 years is whatever you need. Um, I'm that guy. So I, there's, we got to do videos. All right, let's do videos. You know, we got to do uh we got to change the website. All right, let's change the website. So, yep. yeah. So it's been a, it's been really a, a different change every, every month. I never know what my job is going to be with Audioholics, but it has really been fun. Um, I would say, you know, for me, the biggest thing was the first audio show I went with to you. Uh, it was either, I think it was a Cedia show. Uh -huh. And, you know, I think we were at a Yamaha who we went by. And, you know, I only know you as, as Gene, really. And, you know, I kind of knew what we were doing for Audioholics. But then all these these big executives come out of the Omaha booth and they're like, oh, it's Gene, look who it is. And they were asking about, did you test our receiver? And you're like, yeah, yeah, you know, I found some problems with it. And, and they were really excited about that. Because unlike other, other audio companies that do reviews, you don't just look at receivers and look at speakers and do reviews. You drive change in the industry. And that's what I saw at that audio show back in, in 2005. And it, it really opened my eyes up to what Audioholics was. I appreciate that. Well, I mean, that's a big reason I got a credit is that I went to engineering school, right? I, I was an electrical design engineer for six and a half, seven years before I did Audioholics full time. And it, it taught me perspective. It taught me to fact check. It taught me to peer review. That's my training. So I'm not, I'm not a journalist per se. I'm a technical writer and I like everything fact check. So when anybody puts content on the site, like James, for example, James Larson reviews just don't end. There's just no, <laughs> there's no end to his reviews, but I read every word of his review and you read it, Tony, too. You peer yeah. review it. You're the one uploading it. So that anytime this content posted on Audio Hawks, it's probably read at least twice before it's published. <laughs> I wonder how many speakers have been sold from James's in-depth reviews. 
You, uh, you know, I, I wonder how many speakers I've prevented from being sold to. Yeah, <laughs> well, there's that. There's that. I mean, and cables. His, his reviews, and, and Matt Pose. I wish Matt was here. Yeah, um, yeah. he is. He is. Uh, By the way, know. Tony, can I, I just say one thing? Um, Tony does. He uploads a lot of our, our my reviews and um, formats them, and he does a great job. Everything oh. looks great because of Tony. And like, it's, mm -hmm. fine, it's good to finally see you, Tony. And uh, thank yeah. you for making my reviews look so good for so long. <laughs> That's no problem. Yeah, you're you do an unbelievable job. It's it makes you what you do makes my job actually easier. So that's good. Seven thousand word reviews, Tony. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a good question, and I'm going to have Zach from Dream Media on in a little bit because we're actually partnering with Dream Media to help people do um, installations, and we'll give a little plug on that in a little bit. But yeah, we definitely need this because. I do consultations on the side and I've not been promoting it because I've been so backlogged and sometimes people get annoyed when they have to wait like a month or two after they bought uh, one hour with me. So I'm trying to get help um, from industry people because everybody's always wanting to design theaters. They want to know equipment recommendations and, and Tony's actually redesigning some of our recommended system guides for that as well. So we're trying to put together packages for people that don't want to do all the research, but we'll have, products in there from stuff we reviewed and stuff we think will pair well together. So we are trying to reach that kind of audience and help you guys. Obviously we have tons of setup videos. We have tons of theory stuff, calibration stuff, but at the end of the day, it is, if you need someone to help you, we would like to work with professional integrators. And if you are a professional integrator, please reach out to us as well, because we do want to bring this community together as a whole with good knowledge and good installation experience. So you guys have a good experience in your house when you get all this incredible equipment. Yeah, James did a great job on the uh, JBL tower. I know when we did a, I did a video at Audio Vice Live on that 3800 and linked it up with James's review. And I know after that video dropped, because it got like 20,000 views on it, um, they sold a ton of those speakers. So I know it works because we do have affiliate channel partners. And we do appreciate when you guys use our affiliate links in the video description because it gives us a small commission. But at the same time, it see it, the manufacturers see the results. You know, They see that people are making purchase and decisions based on our objective and subjective reviews. So anytime you guys want to support the channel, the best way is to use our affiliate links if you can. We really appreciate that. So with that, I'm going to bring the nicest guy on the planet onto a live stream and also Bill Duddleston from Legacy Audio. And he's a nice guy too. So I want to bring these guys on. I hope it doesn't crash um, StreamYard. Let's see what happens That's here. about the face up between Shane and Bill. Okay, I think I got you guys. I'm going to start with... I'm going to start with Shane since we have you on um, the screen here. And I'm going to explain this nice, uh, the nicest guy on the planet thing. So I always argue that Teo and Shane are the two nicest people I've ever met. So I had them do a nice off when, when Shane went over to Teo's house to install. I think you were installing um, SVTRs or a subwoofer or something. I had you guys have a nice off and this lasted for hours. And it was a stalemate for a while, but then Shane conceded. So by Shane conceding to Teo, prove that he's the nicest guy on the planet. It was but I don't know if you did that because of your niceness or you did it because you were deliberately deceptive. <laughs> Unless he drinks too many Coke Zeros, then he gets a little unruly. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Um, I think I can now say that I'm the nicest guy on the planet because Teo having that graphic up there for that long, that wasn't, that wasn't nice. <laughs> I, I know you made that. So I'll be getting back at you at some point. Um, no, but it, it, it really has been great. Um, you know, I'm thinking about your staff and they are some of the nicest people I have ever met, honestly, and really enjoyed working with all of you over the years. Uh, some of some of you, it's been fairly recent. Uh, you know, I just met James for the first time at Axpona, and uh, it, James and I, gosh, we sat and talked for at least half an hour, maybe 45 minutes, and um, I've always really admired what he has done as far as reviews uh, for you, and, and uh, it's just great to have that personal interaction 
uh, that we, we as a manufacturer have been able to have over the years with Eugene and, and your, uh, with Bertha and your family and all of your staff. And uh, it's just a, a top class organization. And, um, it, you know, it brings me back to the beginning. And I'll say, as you know, I was there in the beginning with you. You were. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because you know, before you had even started Audioholics. In fact, maybe you should explain how we ended up coming together and then I'll kind of take it from there. Yeah, no doubt. So when I first started getting into the home theater stuff, I graduated college. I was trying to put together my first system and I think I bought a Yamaha uh, DSPA 3090, uh, which is an oh, incredible integrated amp. Um, yep. I loved Dolby it. Dolby Digital didn't have DTS didn't have you know any of the immersive stuff no this is but this is a real media amp had plenty of bass i didn't have a subwoofer i went and i upgraded to a dspa1 and i'll talk because i got phil shea in the background i found a bass management glitch in that receiver so if you ran speakers full range it didn't route lfe to them you needed a sub and i was like all of a sudden i'm watching movies with no bass so i went out because i didn't have money i went out and i bought like a 300 hundred dollar clip sub or something like that and no i think it was a uh, pinnacle sub i'm sorry pinnacle sub and the thing was clipping like crazy and i found out it was a preamp that was clipping because dolby digital has voltages that could go you know two volts or even higher it depends on the dynamic range of the um of the soundtrack and I called them up and I told them this and I looked up the Dolby spec. They weren't happy. So they're like, their engineer, they're out of business now, by the way. But um, they were like, well, we got to redesign our sub amps now because of this. I'm like, well, I'm sorry, but Dolby Digital is a new standard, right? So I went through like two or three subs I wasn't happy with. And one of our, one of my first readers when I was doing, I was on audio review, just I maintained a little blog there. I didn't even have Audioholics. He recommended I check out RBH. And I called and I don't know if I talked to you, Shane, or Darren at the time. I think it was Darren, actually. And I got a single 10 from you guys, brought it into my house, hooked it up. And I literally started tearing. Like, I didn't hear bass like that before. I was like, holy crap, this thing is amazing. And of course, my second impulse after two days was I got to upgrade it. <laughs> if it. If it's this good, I got to have the dual 10. So then I called back and, and I... And you guys graciously took the unit back and you sold me a B stock dual 10. And I put that into my system. And then I was like, I got to talk to the guy that's designing this. And that's when you and I started talking, Shane, and we just hit it off. And we talked speakers for hours. We talked audio for hours. And you know, you've become literally my best friend, one of the best friends in my in my life. And and the stuff that you do, the, you know, just the way that RBH runs its company is just amazing to me and um you caused problems with me though because you <laughs> you created a true audioholic because when i thought i was done upgrading you would come out with a new speaker to replace the last one and in <laughs> fact the ones you have behind you right now were my last speaker the status at which were my favorite passive speaker of all time and i was like yeah. i'm gonna die with these speakers don you heard them yeah, yeah. they're the uh, fifth element speakers yeah, yep. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm yep. gonna die with these speakers, and then Shane's like, "Well, wait a minute." I think it was four years later you started getting into active speakers, which I told you about ten years ago. You know, you got to get into active speakers. You finally embraced active, and then the whole world changed because now you can make a speaker sound any way you want. And Bill Duddleston does the same thing. He does active speakers as well, and his stuff is great. And you guys have a lot of similarities in how you guys run the companies because Bill. Um, build design speakers to do really high dynamic range. A lot of companies will give you a little dome tweeter and a single mid range and call it a day. Whereas you guys give a lot of cone area, not just for the base, but for the mid range as well. And it makes a world of difference when you're playing, you know, brass instruments or you're playing really highly dynamic orchestral music. It makes a world of difference when you have more cone area. Absolutely. In fact, uh, Bill and I were talking about that at Axpona, uh, weren't we, Bill? And uh, it, it's yes. interesting. And, and I, I will be the first to admit, I, I've always admired everything Bill has done at Legacy and his speaker products, and I'm a big fan of, of um, you know, everything he has done over the years and have seen him 
uh, at least his product at the shows. It was uh, this last exponent just last week that I finally decided to officially introduce myself to him. We got a chance to to talk, and it, it was a great visit. Uh, but uh, you know, let's go back to the what we're talking about, uh, uh, where you have this disease because it is audio yes. is a disease. Uh, and, and that's the funny thing is that Gene has always, after every upgrade, he says, this is it. This will be the last thing. And you know, that is one of the, you know, key symptoms of the disease is they say, this is it. And you know, in your mind, <laughs> All of this those. isn't it. It, it, it. This will never be it. It never ends. <laughs> And so, well, uh, Shane, I have a theory on that. As I get older, my hearing is declining. I need better and better equipment to compensate. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, one day you and I will be comparing hearing aids together. <laughs> <laughs> I heard there was a lot of that at Expona. I heard there was a lot of guys coming in with hearing aids trying to listen to $4 million speakers. And <laughs> God bless them that they still have the passion for it. But yeah. Yeah. In fact, yeah, why don't we have audiophile hearing aids? Yeah, we're working I, on them. Yeah, I think they yeah. are in the works yeah. for sure. Yeah, we're working. Um, but uh, anyway, thanks again, Gene. I uh, appreciate being part of this. And it's been a, a great 25 years for sure. And uh, uh, as far as I know, I think we have been there again from the very beginning as far uh, as part of your, some part of your reference systems in in, in your place, and uh, we greatly appreciate uh, that. And it's it's made a real difference in our business, for sure, um, having the, the exposure and, um, and, and because people trust what Gene does, I think it's really important that there are some uh, subjective measurements of products uh, I was a big, always a big fan of John Atkinson at Stereophile, and and I think you, in a way, kind of took over in the, uh, in some ways, uh, or uh, I mean, they're still doing that, obviously, but but you uh, picked up that ball and really ran with it to a, a, an even higher degree, in terms of what you provide in your reviews of all the products, and so. Um, we greatly appreciate that as a manufacturer because it validates what we're trying to do, make the very best audio products. And I know yeah. uh, Bill will hand it off to you now. I know you feel exactly the same way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, what Audioholics has really been great about for the whole industry is that it brings truth out front and the scientific minds have a chance to be seen or heard and um, I think um, there's, I don't know, it, 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 there was a joke a long time ago where they took a bunch of high-end reviews and, you know, clipped the last paragraph and the start of it and try to figure out who it was about or whatever. And, it, and so many times the, the hero was the writer themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. I went to, you know, somebody's house and we tweaked this and we suffered for a while and then we moved this and we put some spikes under it. And we did this and we did that. And pretty soon we had the sound working wonderfully. And uh, I just saw a, uh, a review recently of the Tecton speaker. And they were talking about how they had to put it in the closet for three weeks to let, the, let it defumigate from the paint fumes. And I'm like, yes. gee, <laughs> Christmas people. This man <laughs> works so hard to put out what he does. He's doing all, almost all the work himself. And that's the best you can do for this guy. For, for, and he gives more piss than area than anybody out there. And uh, so I, I, I have to say that, you know, there's there's darn few uh, situations. You know, I think Secrets does a good job. You guys do a great job. Yep, they're nice and, guys. Yeah. And, and it, 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 we, we should all uh, want the truth and, and the facts. And, uh, you know, distortion levels at, at, at 30 hertz. Uh, directivity patterns, uh, you know, uh, total dynamic, realistic dynamic range that rates it as a slope because all dynamic range goes down on speakers as the frequency drops. Nobody wants to talk about these things. And uh, that's why we, that's why uh, 
Shane and I both use a lots of piston area and, yeah. and articulation. You know, we talk about uh, tracing speed and this and that and whatever. And let's face it, guys, a loudspeaker is, isn't the weakest link in the, in the system. It's the most awful piece of junk in the system because it can't stop on a dime. It can't start, you know, instantaneously. And uh, so if you're going to hear a big improvement in a system, given enough power and proper amplification, the loudspeakers is the limitation. And uh, I think that uh, with with all the microphones out there, we pretty much, um, I'll say flatlined on microphones because they're so good anyway, and they're so articulate that you can get super articulation from them. But the loudspeaker and its large moving mass is 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 still such a limitation, and I it's um, and I think the secret to the whole thing with a great loudspeaker is having a uh, a big middle mid range, which is where we all live in in our natural yeah. tones, and um, whether you're listening to a uh, uh, the blattiness or of a you know you're listening to a tuba or trombone or or cello versus a violin or whatever. The, the mid-range character is, is just so key. And, uh, you know, treble, is our, it's, it's, treble adds the square to the square wave is the way I look at it. But the reality of it is that tone, the timbre of what you hear is so much in, in the middle mid-range. And uh, uh, that's the thing about RBH. I just had a, a gentleman ask me, what companies do you like out there? And I said, well, here, there's one that's pretty darn tough to beat right here for the for the dime, they're really fantastic, and uh, so yeah. At any rate, but uh, you know, I don't. I I really applaud Audioholics, and and over the year, you know, Gene's taking the trouble to come and visit us. I'm a super busy guy, and I know he yeah, appreciates. That was awesome. it. Yeah, and and uh, for for Gene to take the time out of his schedule and spend some time with me and 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 learn more about what we did and all that, I I really appreciated that. That and uh, so. Right. That was one of the highlights. You know, I love visiting manufacturers, Bill, and and just to understand your operation and and how family driven your company is. I think your daughter still works with you too. Absolutely, yeah. She's Absolutely. a sweetheart. Yeah. Um, just the people that work with you have been working with you for decades. I mean, you yeah. you have very loyal employees, and your background, man. You're you have a chemical engineer degree, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's no easy feat. That's one of the hardest engineer degrees to get so the fact that you have a chemical engineering degree and you decided to become an acoustician that's awesome well, you know the, the advantage of that degree is that so many acousticians are almost using visual models of, of bb's bouncing her off of walls and we're dealing with a compressible fluid that expands as as it's moving into the room and you know whether you're looking at the uh, how how uh, things come filter or how they interfere with the boundaries interfering with the total mix of what you hear so that's why directivity is so important and and uh, you know i've i've said many times that if 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 everyone would focus on getting the first 60 degrees right uh you can point that loudspeaker anywhere in the room and it'll hit every seat and if you just simply look at a diagram it's absolutely true and uh, uh no matter how many loudspeakers you have in the room but hey, well, so we, yeah, go ahead. We got to get you on more regularly to do these kind of tech sessions because I think you have a lot of knowledge that you could drop. Um, we have various manufacturers come on. We have Shane come on. Uh, we have you know the guys from Pearl Listen, Dan Romer. Mm -hmm. So I try to bring the best designers on that I can and just just do educational stuff, not product promotional. Just talk sure. about yeah. loud speaker yeah. theory. Yeah, we always yeah. love to dialogue yeah. with you. Yeah, it's never to me. It's never about brand. It's about building the fastest race car every day I come to work, and uh, you know, it's it's uh, acceleration. It's it uh, if you can make a loudspeaker accelerate, stop, start faster, and uh, uh, have good sensitivity. What these amplifiers were gifted today, you know, I, I don't know how I could have been born at a better time mm -hmm. to be uh, in in, in it, it is it is just a. Uh, a rebirth of what you're capable of doing in audio. And we all, we all saw it coming. I mean, when we saw what digital audio could do in terms of dynamic range and who would think that I would be working with 64 bit DSP right now, it just blows my mind. And uh, I remember yeah, the wavelet, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it, you just take it for granted. Um, you know, you got the resolution is trillion times what, you know, what you were, were, were working with. 
not so long ago. So it's just, just amazing. So. Yeah. And I, you know, what really impressed me too. And, um, when I went and visited you, you were just getting started out doing class D amplifiers yeah. and you showed me a flaw, not a flaw, but a limitation of the module. We were talking about the module you were thinking about using at the time, and it turned out they didn't have enough heatsink area on it, even yeah. though it was Class D. Right. So you showed me that you actually designed a whole heatsink for it that greatly improved the efficiency and the output of that amplifier. Yeah. And now you have the uh, the latest version. I believe you're using ICE. Yeah, we're using ICE now, and they're up to a 2,000 watt modules now. Yeah, but, no, it's it's serious. I I measured the one that Marantz uses. It's not. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's the one you have. I think it's a lower mm -hmm. power one because it's two hundred watts. Yeah. But we definitely got to get one of your amps in for review. I yeah. I want to take a close look at it because it looks yeah. it's beautiful too. That would be great. So, I like it, yeah. awesome, Bill. It was awesome having you. Um, I'm gonna have to like take a couple of people off because there's other people trying to get in in a minute. But before I do that, I want to go, I want to start with the contest. It's shame. We've got you on and we have contests. We're giving away a couple of products. So here's the deal. Shane, RBH just came out with the new impression series, Gen 3. These look really killer, man. I like the cabinet design. Your products are all made in the U.S. And Bill, you guys have a cabinet shop that's all done in the U.S. as well, right? That's correct. Yeah. So kudos to American speaker companies bringing manufacturing back to America. That's freaking awesome. And now Shane, these speakers are, what are they? Five, 600 bucks a pair? 700. 700, I'm sorry, okay. 700 a pair, they're the five eye impressions. We are giving these away live and I'm going to put a question up and whoever gives me the best answer you have to email me from the email address that you registered from. So here's the question. How has Audioholics helped you the most? So I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to respond to that. And then we will pick a question. We will pick the right answer. Please make sure you're in the continental United States. I can't ship these to Zimbabwe or to Europe or anything like that. So let's wait for some comments in here. Not yet, but... We will keep going and we will um, pick a winner on that shortly. And I think we'll bring on, we've got, let's see, we've got Phil Shea in the background and we've got RSL as well. No, don't email. You could just put your answer here in the uh, chat group and then email me if you win. That's how it's going to work. Sorry if it's a little confusing. I've never tried to do contest giveaways on YouTube before. So the email address, let me put this down. You can tell that we are live. Here is where you will email your answer if we choose you or your, your information. So it's info at Audioholics. Again, it's the Impression Series 5i. And while we are waiting on some answers for that, I am going to bring on Phil Shea. Phil Shea. <laughs> First Big, dog. Big dog. Big dog. My brother? <laughs> it's been too long, man. It's been over a year. Since we've been face to face, you know, look, real quick for I hope you don't get Bill off, but I'd heard demos for many years, you know, way back in the day that were all, you know, chamber music and this and that. And I got to, to hear a big set of legacy towers that cranked up. And I think that was the first religious experience I've ever had in audio from those right. legacies. Yeah. I was like, wow. So you always have a special place in my heart, Bill, on that. All right. Well, we like to keep it real, man. <laughs> yeah, Bill well, Shea, my man. How's it going, guys? Hey, Gene, Bertha, Phil. Hi, we Phil. we go way back, my friend. Yeah, and I'm trying to think how far it it goes way back. And um, yeah, in the industry, actually, you're probably one of my oldest friends in the industry. That's not retired yet. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Anyone I've known longer than you is. Uh, is hung it up by now, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. I remember you you mentioned about going to CES, and you know, was uh, Bruce Bernstein would probably come out there, and of course Alex would come out and talk to you. We wanted to hear what you had to say and stuff like that. And uh, that's been the one thing cool about what you. First of all, I just back in the nineties, there's this place called Audioholics, and I just thought that that was the quirkiest name at the time. Yeah, but it just absolutely fit, and I can't think of a better name choice than that. 
um, that you've used over the years. So congrats on, on that right off the bat. But, you know, you know we're, we're talking about industry stuff, you know, and, and suggestions that you do. And um, I appreciate your uh, honesty and your straightforwardness. You're not shy about bringing stuff up. And your goal is, you know, over the years is just to make this industry better, get all of us better products. Us as manufacturers, that's what we want. You know, we want you to, we want to build a better product for our customers and your customers. So um, we've always had, you know, going back to the seventies, all the, you know, the writers and stuff like that. Well, they just write a bad review or they say they didn't like this. They like that, but not this. And, you know, and then we turn on forward that to the engineers. Well, that doesn't mean anything to them. I mean, it's tough for them to decipher it. Uh, but when you and I talk, you know, you, you, you'll call me up and say, Hey, something's is measured weird. Guess what? I can take that graph and I do take that graph. We just forward it to the engineers they analyze it. They measure. Sometimes we we duplicate your test. You know, on occasion we find things and stuff like that. So, uh, it's uh, channels like yours that we should all be thankful that we have available now because we didn't have this 25 years ago to what it's become now. Uh, for you know, it's a it's a audio is a global thing, um, and it just the things that you do uh, just kind of shine a light on stuff on directions we can go uh to make things better and it's not you know it's not just it's not just yamaha it's um you know it's across the board so thank you for everything you've done and you work crazy hard i don't know how if everyone understands how hard you work it's um i probably get just about as many emails from you and your channel as i do from alex my boss um just the number of videos that you're dropping and the depth and oh james i do need to say something these guys are giving you a hard time about your long reviews uh <laughs> do do not make them shorter if anything nope. make them longer yeah. i read yeah. every single word of those reviews and uh yeah it takes a while to read them but then uh I'll know, <laughs> i do know the product once i'm done with your article he's so. the best in the business for yeah. no man he's uh, elevated awesome. he's really he's really elevated what we do with loudspeakers yeah and, James, your contributions are invaluable to Audio Hall. I actually I, talked to Phil quite a, uh, a lot at Expona this yeah. um, this year. Yeah, like we, we were just talking um, Friday, and it was good to talk to you, Phil. I yeah. think we talked. I think we met before that, but I don't think we talked at length before then. So, yeah, no, yeah. it was nice. It was fairly quiet, so we had actually had some quiet time in the booth, so we could uh, spend some quality time and. Yeah, awesome nice. speakers with the NS series. Hopefully, I I think we're gonna actually finally get around to doing a review on the NS speakers and I'm really excited to do it. Those were great speakers. Good, good. Yeah. Glad you like them and uh, look forward to another 9,000 words. <laughs> yeah, well. On the channel. <laughs> well, Phil, I have to, I have to let the cat out of the bag. I don't know if I, I don't know if I publicly told you this before, but part of how I started audio hogs is uh, to make it full time was number one chain from RBH basically said, you need to do this full time. You need to yeah. start figuring out how to make money. Then I used you guys. I pawned you and Denon. I said, "Well, Denon's doing this, so you guys need to match it." <laughs> you used to I do pulled, that all the time. <laughs> I pulled a Kobayashi Maru. If you're a Star Trek two, Star Trek two was one of the best movies ever made, in my opinion, because it teaches you life lessons. It teaches you how to beat okay. the no-win scenario. So I pawned you and Denon off against each other for years. So thank you for thank you yeah. for taking the date. And it, no, it was not transparent. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> we knew what you were doing, so it was, uh, yeah, it, it was pretty obvious. But it, it worked was, out. It worked. It, it, worked it did out. because look, we we did so much content, and we you know we moved the bar. We you guys have made so many changes to your products over the years because of what we pointed out fairly. I was never. Yeah, you know, I was never going out of my way to make you guys look bad. I did write that one article trading amplifier quality for features and new trend in AV receivers, and I ripped you guys apart. But I, let's be honest, it was true. There was a generation of receivers that were using the IC chip amps because you were cutting corners. And after that, Avantage was born. Yeah, yeah. So all great things happen with the Yamaha consumer. Yeah, and it's like when I see your phone, you know, you 
I don't know the. I don't even think you know my work phone number, so it's all just my private number that you call me on. Uh, whenever I see it, it's like, okay, here's an hour and a half. <laughs> I'm going to lose, <laughs> but it's going to be good. You know, it's like, uh, it, you know, we're, we're good friends now. You know, I consider you a good friend, and so we yep. call. I know, and then you know, with our engineering backgrounds, that just gives us uh, more stuff to talk about and uh, perspective on on things. So it's, I know when I'm done, when I hang up the phone with you, that I'm going to be uh, a little bit smarter and a little bit wiser than I was uh, before I answered. So I appreciate awesome. your friendship. Yeah, likewise, man. You guys are good people. I really enjoyed having Yam Yamada son out here to do those videos. And we definitely want to be Kumasawa son. I'm sorry. Yeah. He's uh, a bad. It was just a great time. And I really appreciate it. And um, looking forward to seeing when you guys are going to come out with a replacement to the 5200 because it's, it's long in the tooth. I know. I know. I know. You know, I was thinking about this. You know, when you asked, you mentioned this, you say, hey, will you be interested in dropping by? Well, that's like a no brainer, of course, I'm, you know, for the anniversary here. But I remember um, the home theater cruise. <laughs> that was yeah. 20 years yeah. ago. Yes. We went on that. And for the younger people in the audience back in the day, all audio uh, fanatics across the country could sign up for a cruise. Uh, in the Caribbean, yep. and it was a week. It was a week long cruise, and then a bunch of manufacturers. It'd be uh, uh, record engineers there, and producers, and stuff like it. So it was a big learning experience of uh, all audio uh, audio freaks, where they get to hang out with uh, manufacturers and talk to engineers and stuff. That was, you know, those were cool times back then, and that uh, kind of was another step to the, you know, where we're at today. That we should yeah. be able to do more stuff like that. But you know, at least we got more shows more quality shows that we can go to and hang out and spend time. Oh, for sure, man. We'll, we'll be definitely covering CD again, coming up. We're going to audio advice and this summer. So hopefully right. we'll run into each other there. Um, I'm going to knock off uh, bill. I'm going to say goodbye. Cause I'm trying to get uh, other people are trying to get in. I really appreciate you coming in. So I am going to see how I can, I guess, kick so we can bring more people in here. Hey, Gene, I, I guess I'll take off at this point so you can get other people in. Uh, but... Let me see how many people I have on. I have one, two, three, four, five, ten. I think we're okay now. So if anybody, I don't know if SVS or anyone was trying to get in and they couldn't get in. But I do have a winner for the first uh, prize for the RBH. And the answer for the question was from Miguel. Uh, how Quinones. do you? Quinones. Thank you for being here for the Spanish. Oh, <laughs> Audio Hollis has raised awareness of the relationship between solid measurements and quality sound. Congratulations, yeah. Miguel. Please email us at info at audioholics and you will get the RBH 5i bookshelf speakers shipped to you if you are in the continental US. So, really appreciate great. that. That's a great point. Cool. And I'm going to bring on. <laughs> Let's see who's here next. Hey, I'm Phil, is to... that a Strat back there? Uh, it's a Pacific. It's a Yamaha, of course. Of course. <laughs> what a question. It's a Yamaha Pacifica, <laughs> Yamaha Revstar, and uh, a bunch of Yamaha acoustics. Beautiful. I have, I have friends in the music side of Yamaha, so that helps. <laughs> you know, I think people forget that Yamaha makes the instruments music is played on the equipment that uh, it's mixed on and then the equipment to play it back on. Nobody can really say that. Yeah. And then motor bike, you're right. Can you write that down for me, Miguel? Yes. For the RBH5i. Okay, so I'm going to bring on next, I'm going to bring on Drew from RSL. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Hey, Gene, congrats. It's been, it's been awesome listening to you guys uh have this discussion because it it brought brought back so many like good memories and i have to share one i think and and teo i think touched on it in the early days uh where he mentioned your review or reference about the denon 3805 receiver and you speci that specifically influenced me to buy that specific receiver and i recommended it to everyone so Thank you for that because that was some of my some one of the best purchases I had made at the time. It had had its issues, but in general, at the time, it was built like a tank compared to everything else. <laughs> so, I had to share that. Awesome. So, Drew, you you guys are running a great company, and and again, it's a family run company, right? With Howard and and yeah, Joe. So I mean, 
Howard, myself, um, and Joe, Joe is Howard's son. Uh, we run the company, uh, we're equal partners and we share all the, the supervisorial duties. We're growing our team and, you know, we're growing and a lot of thanks to you guys, you, you know, you represent, we have so many customers that call us as a baseline for, Hey, I saw James's review and on your product and I just had to find out more about it. And he does that. It was, it's just a, a way for people to gain awareness about a company like ours. We're a relatively small West coast focused brand that people on the West coast may know of us, but the rest of the country may not because as you know, Howard started it in 1970 and it evolved in RSL was my first career job out of college. And, and I've come full circle. Um, and it's been like it's been a, this this time and hi-fi is great and it's i think it's attributable to the the time and the work that your your whole team has put in to get us to where we are now because the last couple decades have been it, it's a it would grew and has grown and grown each decade each year and it's just ramping up now i mean for my son to have a turntable is like i can i can die a happy man now <laughs> yeah <laughs> It, it never thought turntables would have that renaissance that they've had, you know, so yeah. it, it's, it's awesome. Well, you guys are just killing it in the value market. I mean, the, t the uh, 10 Mark II, the 10 S Mark II, you can't even keep yeah. that in stock. After we, after we well, reviewed that well, sub, it was well, never in stock again. <laughs> I know. So, okay, we it's not our prerogative to be this way. We hate being out of stock because, you know, I, I get calls all the time, but we're a small company. We're not, we don't have big corporate financing. We, you know, everything's funded from our sales. So we use what we can build to next production. We can go forward and, and we added a model recently that, uh, that you guys helped announce. And we thought for sure we'd have plenty of that new model, the 10 E um, and it's gone. I mean, we sold, <laughs> sold out completely in a week. And, and so we have to now schedule pre-orders, get a queue going, you know, type of thing on these pre-orders. It's just, it's it's hard to manage, especially for a small company like that. So we're trying to grow and, and satisfy the demand. But again, people, the awareness that you guys do and the reviews that you guys provide really help a small company like us gain that awareness. So thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you guys. I have to do that. No, it, what you guys are doing is awesome. I do have one suggestion and... Um, yeah. So you've heard me say this before, but I want to say it publicly because I want people to comment down below. Oh, no. You need a tower. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't have to be full range. It does not have to be full range. Okay. You need a floor standing speaker. I try okay. to I try to promote your speakers to like my brother, and he's like, I don't want a bookshelf speaker on stands okay. in my family. I want a slim tower. You need a slim tower that has higher sensitivity than your bookshelf speaker that plays flat to 80 hertz. Then you get two 10S Mark IIs. And you're in two channel heaven for a okay. very good deal. You need We're, a tower. You're not alone in saying that. It's it's on our roadmap. Um, and the the number of SKUs. I, I don't know if you guys do. You guys know In and Out Burgers. You guys know that, right? Oh yeah. In and Out. Okay. Yeah, we don't have one here. But I know <laughs> okay. Well, I'm you. sorry. Okay, Teo does. That's good. So I bring <laughs> that up because what they do is they have select products that they do well. And for us, when we add products, it we we don't release it until it's ready. We have to make sure that we can support it in both manufacturing scale, quality, reliability, all those things. So for us to do product development, you know, we do it very methodically and it's, yeah. it's our passion. It's what drives our company. We're engineering driven in that manner. So when it comes to a tower speaker, it is on our roadmap. It's just the sheer time resource that it takes and um, it will come. And it, uh, not soon enough, though, obviously. <laughs> All right. Well, we're, third, hold, I think it's we're third, holding I think you to it. I think we're holding you to Actual speakers. Yes. And architectural, yes. And that's what I'm saying, like the select sure. products. We see, we see, identify, I'll call them voids, or I think areas where people, there's, there can be something that's better and a better value prospect. So that's a lot of our DNA. And every, in our DNA, I, I, I think, you know, uh, Bertha talk, talked about, the why, as you guys mentioned that early on, the why. The why is checked on every product we do. The DNA of this, does this match the why? Like, why do we do what we do? Well, the product has to reflect that. And our mm -hmm. customer service has to reflect, everything has to reflect that. So the why is so important. 
Fully uh, agree, Drew. Core. Yeah. <laughs> no, and it's been so. It's been a great, great time with working with you guys for for the short time. I've been here for three years, but I've been following you obviously in your your Audio Hawks community for since almost the inception. So that's awesome. Awesome. Well, I appreciate the support. And speaking of which, you guys are giving away. This is the ten okay. E, right? Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to stop you here. I talked to Howard and Joe, and we're going to have to retract that. And I'm not oh. saying this. I'm No, no, hear me out. I'm saying it because not only are we going to give away a 10E, we're going to give away a 12S. If you... Oh, even a toy was better. Can I participate? <laughs> so you're saying okay, so... we're going to cancel the 10E, it's going to be a 12S? No, you're going to give away both. Both? Oh, both. The only Whoa. difference is we have we reserved the ten E because that was we originally slated, and uh, we talked about it. And he said, you know, these guys, Audio Hogs community, it's our community, so let's let's see what we can do more for them. And then the twelve S. Oh. The only thing is, we're going to have to the twelve S is going to wait till it comes back in stock, okay? <laughs> Which is next month, so middle of next. Damn, month. Damn, man! All right, well, let's start with the ten E. Okay. So okay. this subwoofer is similar to the ten S, a little bit less output, a little bit less power well but the, the price is what like three hundred dollars or three twenty nine ship two ninety nine ship to a customer so wow, you know crazy. that prospect is as you know when the price for our speed Warfare, when he launched it in 2016 our original model of this which is where we built our really a core of what we do was 399 and since we've since that time we've made one major overhaul to the mark ii which was adding a dsp and adding these features and having the cast frame and staying true to all that stuff well part of our dna is to make this value proposition of products that are truly attainable because our goal is to actually grow the audio community and usually you have to start with people at their youth where they might not have disposable income that uh, others might so if we can gain that we can get them into really good hi-fi type of caliber of products and get them into something. It's like we're helping the community in general. And that's ultimately our goal because to make it attainable. And that's why the 10E, it's the 10, 10 inch subwoofer for everyone. So that's where oh, the E like is, that. It comes from. I like well, I found our I found our winner for this. Okay. I really, I really like this response. Magic TK says audio hulks helped me by explaining the science and theory behind audio it supported and enhanced my knowledge and experience since the 90s so you've wow. been with us since i started the website that is awesome my friend so please Congrats, email us at, yeah email us at info at audio um, from the email address that you registered for this event and give us your youtube name the magic tk and you will get yourself a 10e we'll put you in touch with rsl to get that subwoofer out to you thank you for that comment and i think on the 10e uh i don't know james i don't know we haven't spoken but uh it's in the queue i'm i guess guessing with you on on the review side of things yes i i'm i'm on it and um i've um, i haven't dug into it too much but i like what i see for 300 dollars. i think it's really uh you know it's so if I don't want to spoil anything because the review yeah. is not finished, but I'll just spoil that I kind I like it I like it and okay but that's <laughs> all that's good to hear yeah, yeah and, wait for the finished view yeah yeah I'll, I'll wait others. for that I shared a lot of detail I think insights that I think James uh, is one of the few people that can really appreciate the voice coil insulation grade or the spider material blend versus the other ones so there's some differentiation so people understand well how do we get there from the tennis mark two yet get x amount percentage performance so that's why it's it's been a it's been a winner for uh, for us uh so far and we just launched it and we were getting as you know building up stock as quickly as we can on that awesome and, well you, you made a liar out of me we're giving away eight products not seven <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah so uh I, I, you, you probably don't have a picture of the 12s. You, you, I'm guessing so. Um, Teo, it, can you grab one? Voice. Whoever wins this I'll, needs I'll to make a face. Yeah, okay, that, <laughs> needs to that make thing is a beast. James, yeah. you reviewed the 12s. Yeah, yeah, it's much it bigger than the the 10. The the 10s, I think the, the 10e and the 10s are the same size. I think, so, and this is like literally twice as big. The 10, yeah. the 12, uh, 12s. Yeah, it's a big one. It's. That's a good sub. Read my review. Read read the yeah. review. I mean, yeah, it's it, really it, a good sub. 
it definitely digs deep. And we actually have, I have to share, we have a, many customers that are using that, the 12S with the 10S in a stacked uh, cascading uh, cascading setup where they literally high pass, the high pass out of the 12S feeds the input of the 10S and it's, you know, 40 hertz. They let the speed woofer yeah. take care, do the bass at 40 hertz. And they try to, you know, obviously match for the room and all those things to get a thumb result. But it's actually pretty amazing feedback we've had on that uh, uh, combination That's of sure. things. Yeah. So I picked I picked our winner for this. No. Drum Gene, roll. you can bring up my, uh, my share for the 12S. <laughs> okay. well, there's so many windows here. I can't even. Right okay, here there. it is. Okay, thank you. So this, let me just warn you guys. Be careful not, what you wish. Be, yeah. Be careful what you wish for because it's big. <laughs> Looks nice though. Be yeah, careful what you wish. Yeah. Oh, that's and that's wild. the other thing is, um, <laughs> we will throw in a custom uh, a custom grill if they want. Meaning, not a custom. We have new color options on our grill. Um, it's an oh. add-on grill. The, the grill all subwoofers come with come with a color match grill. But we found if someone gets a white one, we have a heather gray one. We have a charcoal gray now. So you can order them and change up the look at any time for the five combinations. And we also sell just the grill frame if you find yourself happy or handy with uh, maybe uh, Joanne's Fabrics uh, closeout deals or something. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And the retail, what's the retail on that sub? Uh, it's $7.99. Okay. We have our remote control, control and all that, that fun stuff. Okay, I, all right. So here's the winner for uh, this 12S subwoofer. It's Jay Curson, and it says Audio Hawks has helped me the most because I've been able to get information about audio products and topics that I can utterly trust. Thank you, my friend. That's a great comment. Please email us at info at audioholics.com with the email address you registered for this event and put your screen name for YouTube, and you will get a 12S from RSL. Lucky. Lucky. Good deal. Incredible. Drew, I appreciate it. I am going to bring hey, on some other no guests. No problem, guys. Here. Thanks. Thanks for everything again. Thanks, you guys Drew. are awesome. Good great to see you. Thanks, Drew. Appreciate it. Please Thank give you. Howard and Joe my best regards. I, I will. And I Andrew will. Take well. care. Yeah. Appreciate Take care. It. Thanks. Bye-bye, okay. guys. Hey, Gene, can I jump in just a, real quick? Yes. Sorry. Um, just for your audience that doesn't know this, when you talk to manufacturers, when you were talking to Drew and you said, Oh, Drew, you just need a, a tower speaker. Um, for your audience, every single phone call for the last 25 years, there's always that Yamaha needs the something, something. And I know you do it with Denon, and I know you do it with every speaker manufacturer, but every single phone call I've ever had with Gene in the conversation somewhere is, oh, you guys need to do this. So, you know, I just want everyone to know uh, the ass. He, he, well, yeah, that's. <laughs> that. But you know what? It, it makes everyone think, and so you're trying to push the industry forward. And so, uh, you know, that's the kind of person you are, and that's the kind of channel that that you're running, and uh, it does make a difference. And it's uh, you're persistent. Let's say that, and <laughs> that is appreciated. And you're, you know, the the, the whole audience and uh, you know everyone that's watching should. Uh, should be thankful for uh, Gene's persistence in that over the years. I really appreciate that, Phil. It's you, you got that from your mom. Yeah, I did get that from my mom. <laughs> my mom was the type of person sure. that when she wanted something, she would get it. So, Gene, I want to highlight what Phil just said. I actually think that's going to be the Audioholics legacy. I think, I think at the outset, folks may see Audioholics as a review site. It's much more than that. It's really the voice of the enthusiast to the manufacturer and the legacy of Audioholics is how you've changed the industry. Without We're audio, all enthusiasts, every, every one of us. Yeah. yeah, you're our voice. Yeah, absolutely. Well, definitely our voice. Yep. Yeah. People don't realize this, but I, I did a couple of trade shows back in the day and Yamaha was there in 2007. We did it in Clearwater 2008. We did it in Disney. It was a lot of work to do it, but we were bringing consumers and manufacturers together before we had a lot of these other shows that are online. You know, it was, and then we did one in 2012. You're right. Yeah. Then I realized it was too much work. I'll just go to other people's shows. <laughs> what, what about all the phrases you've coined, like bouncy house? 
Oh. <laughs> no, yeah, don't be looking too happy about the bouncy house. So, <laughs> the bouncy house, the voice of God. but you know what? I'm a huge fan of, of Dolby Atmos. I've been speaking out positively about spatial audio. I've been speaking out positively about Dolby Atmos, but don't slap a speaker on top of another speaker and bounce it off the ceiling and expect good sound. It's just common physics. <laughs> Shane, you, Shane, you don't have any bouncy house speakers in your lineup, do you? <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> no, we have some that uh, are more height speakers, um, similar to what uh, you know a few other companies out there have done that are angled down from the ceiling. But uh, yes. no, yeah, that makes, that makes sense. In fact, yeah. I'm going to bring on Nick Brown um, on this from SBS because. <laughs> Let me let me introduce Nick. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? What's up, Nick? Yes. Awesome up, to Don? have you here, my friend. Awesome to have you here. Well, I'm such a, so happy to be here. Um, you know, you're obviously a legend, and I don't, I don't think you know how far back we go since uh, it started for me at the uh, PR agency Caster Communications. Um, I was repping Paradigm, Anthem, Krell, some of the you know pretty well known brands. And I was completely green. I had no experience with high, with high performance audio. I had no real, uh, you know, ambition to even get into the space. It was so new to me. And when I learned about, you know, Audioholics and some of the other sites were out there, uh, I just gained such a respect for what you were trying to do again. And I think it's been said a lot of different ways tonight, but you were bringing a level of, you know, factualness and realness and sort of uh, honesty that I didn't really see in a lot of other places at that time you know so much of it was was built on you know playing favorites or emotions and things like that and uh i just never got that from any of your reviews and i, I also just realized what a good guy you were just sort of working on the peripheral of what you were doing and uh you know being with those brands and and seeing that there were people who were willing to like take somebody under their wing and uh and sort of teach them some of the things that maybe they hadn't known about the industry and about everything before then, you know, it was really enlightening. And I talked to Ed Mullen a little bit today. Uh, yes. and, you know, he, yeah, he, he made a funny comment about how you guys were really the godfather of subwoofer reviews. He was doing some work with uh, home theater, excuse me, home theater, hi-fi. And a lot of what you guys sort of pioneered as far as the testing goes became what is CTA. And, and I know you were, you were big in establishing that. So mm -hmm. I think that sort of OG status that you guys pulled was, uh, you know, something that obviously meant a lot and has, continues to be huge with the Basaholics and everything else you've done. Yeah, and I appreciate the fact that Ed was always, Ed actually helped me write that standard. So I was working on that with Josh Rickey, and this is before James Larson was involved, I think, with Audioholics. Yes. And we came up, we had to come up with a way to, to standardize room size ratings on subs based on output, based on controlled measurements through CEA 2010. And we worked on that for a few months and then I sent it to Ed Mullen and he really looked at it with fine tooth comb. In fact, we just updated it now because we have an extreme rating for infrasonic subs. And I think a couple of your subs make that now. Anyway, I think the uh, PB16 Ultra will meet the extreme rating. James, you can confirm or deny that. The Maximus rating. The, I'm sorry, Maximus. Yes. I'm like using <laughs> it right now. The Maximus rating, it's beyond extreme. And, uh, and I'm going to like repost the article so people could see it. But um, here's something, Nick, you may not be aware of. So back when Dolby Atmos came out and they started doing the bouncy house speakers, and I was like, man, this is this is not good, right? I remember talking to, it was either Ed Mullen or is Gary Yacoubi, and we were talking about what you guys were going to do for high channels. And I implored you guys, I'm like, please don't do a bouncy house. Do a high channel with an angled baffle. And, and point it down, put it up at the wall and, and point it down towards the listening area. And you guys actually listen because you came out with the prime elevation and that's, correct me if I'm wrong, is that not one of your best selling speakers of all time? You nailed it. Yeah, I mean, that that was one of our sort of pioneering moments as far as speakers go, was to, to drop that speaker as part of the prime series or a little bit afterwards and take sort of a de divisive approach to what had been the conventional way of delivering Atmos, which is the ceiling bounce or you know in ceilings. And, you know, the fidelity we were able to achieve, you know, with basically a bookshelf speaker with an angled front baffle uh, really opened a lot. And I think the mount too, the mount was key in, in terms of getting it to be widely adopted, you know, put on a ceiling, put high on a sidewall. Um, that was something that really helped 
the product succeed well. But yeah, you absolutely nailed it. It was something where we were sort of toying with the idea. It wouldn't have earned the official certification, but we sort of were like, you know what, if we put this product out there, people are going to use it for its intended purpose. And, and it absolutely has become one of our popular. And now we have the Ultra Evolution, which has quickly become one of the most popular in, in the new series as well. Man, I heard the, um, was it, what, what's the flagship of the Ultra Evolution? Is it the Titan? Or the is Pinnacle. It just, Pinnacle. The Pinnacle. Yeah. So I heard that one at Florida Audio Expo, and it was one of the <laughs> best sounding speakers at the show. And it was really, yeah. Xavier, you heard it as well. I think yeah. Don, I mean, right? I have the Ultras in my theater room, and those just blow them away. Yeah. Well, I know. It was just, I mean, everybody checked to see that subs were turned off. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We were going? getting a lot of that at Axpona this week, and I know James will have some personal experience and uh, nine or ten thousand words to write, which uh, I'm very uh, anxious to see. And also your questions. I got to say, your staff asked the best questions, always insightful, never like probing or leading, like just very much trying to get to the bottom of things. Um, and so, you know, I, I look forward to a little bit of that from uh, from James, I imagine here coming soon. Well, we're looking forward because we got two products from you in from the Evolution series to review. Yeah, um, for those, uh, I guess, our listeners here, our, our viewers, I, I am going to be doing a review on the Pinnacles, the Ultra Evolution Pinnacles. And so they're in house. I unboxed them last week. And holy cow, those are, that's a big speaker. Hosses. Hosses. That's a big speaker. I, I have to, like, oh, I have to measure that thing. It's 96 pounds. <laughs> All right, Gene. Okay, you better be appreciative. You I don't want you crabbing about a, a long article. I have to lift those things up a ladder. So, um, hey, I, I, we've got on Steve from Cambridge Audio. He's a professional bodybuilder. He's going to give you some oh, tips man. in a minute. Yeah. Okay. So just wait because this dude will get you jacked up so you can lift that speaker. <laughs> so this, that SBS review is probably going to be the most anticipated speaker review <laughs> of the year, not really the decade, because yeah. everybody's <laughs> curious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I want to make a comment about that too, because, you know, I feel, um, Gene, you were sort of a pioneer in the world of digital, you know, audio reviews specifically, you know, you dropped at a time 25 years ago when, you know, there was a lot of print books that were sort of dominating things yeah. and you brought the game online and you've continued to grow that over the past 25 years. And now like, it's cool to see you, uh, sort of acting like that godfather figure to a lot of the the youtubers who are coming out i know you mentioned aaron's uh audio corner and some of those guys who have a similar approach to you it's really uh i, I think helping spurn that next generation not that you're going anywhere hopefully but uh bringing that you know next level of people up to speed and sort of your approach to uh you know fact-based reviews and measurements and things like that i think it's definitely uh helped inspire some uh some of the future reviewers as well yeah, no, I appreciate it. We're getting good content these days online. So that's that's just awesome. And I'm glad that there's people that are taking the objective side of things as well. You know, you need to have both, not just a subjective, but it's good to have correlation with re meaningful measurements. So while we're on this topic, you guys are doing an SB2000 Pro summer for giveaway. Ooh. That is correct. That is our... Uh... Sealed cabinet subwoofer, uh, 800 watts RMS, 1500 watts peak power. So somebody's gonna have some nice thump in their living room, and uh, we're happy to, you know, trade that up for something. If uh, you know somebody already has an SVS subwoofer and perhaps wants to go dual, we can certainly work on whatever uh, they're interest most interested in. But that's what we wanted to to throw out for this momentous occasion. Awesome. So we have a winner here for this one, and then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna change the question after that. We are picking Matthew Burr, and, and Matthew Burr says, Audi Hulks helped encourage me to pursue a career in the AVIT industry through education, through the measurements and technical knowledge I gained, I could encourage clients to keep listening. Thank you, Matthew. I really appreciate that. Please email me at info at audioholics.com from the email address that you registered for this event and put your screen name for YouTube, and you guys will get an SB2000 Pro Wow. And possibly to upgrade if you want, um, mail to you from SVS Sound. Congrats, Thank Matthew. You. Awesome. Congratulations. Excellent. Yeah, Nick. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing where the Evolution speakers go. I'm very excited for you guys. I think I'm glad you embraced MTM designs because some of the best sounding speakers in the industry tend to be MTMs. I think yep. Shane would agree with me on that. <laughs> yep, for sure. You get more dynamic range, more cone area, just like what Bill Duddleston was saying with Legacy. Yeah. Uh, a lot of manufacturers missed the boat on not giving you enough mid-range cone area. 
You lose no, sensitivity. No replacement for displacement, right, Shane? Absolutely. <laughs> yep. You got it. Yeah. And it's not just about playing loud. It's about being effortless. So even at low volume levels, when you have a higher sensitivity speaker that has a lot of dynamic range, it just sounds, even at low volume, it sounds more effortless. And I don't know if that's something you could quantify necessarily with measurements. True. Yeah. So I'm going to bring on, we have our next guest here from Per Listen, Mr. Eric, how are you doing? Ooh, How's everyone doing? What's up, man? Good. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, you're you're louder than everybody else. You must be using a Perlis and microphone or something. Yeah. <laughs> you got a UPC array on it. Yeah. You know, I used to design microphones, so I, I got extra sensitive microphones here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Eric, I'm glad you're here. Look, we are huge fans of Perlis, and Don and I both saw uh, your product at the first before it was even released. We saw it in like some type of trade show magazine, and we called each other up instantly. I'm like, we got to get these in. James Larson got the first set of the S7Ts, and and I'm not trying to toot our own horn, but that review that James did put you guys on the map. It was everywhere. Everybody was linking to it. Everybody was reading it. It, it just became a sensation and it just kind of, you guys have just been killing it since. Yeah. It's one of those things of when you're a new brand um, and you're trying to, you know, make, you know, talk about yourself, talk about what pro listen is. There's a lot of haters, of course, online and they're like, these specs are fake, blah, blah, blah. And uh, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, negative impact because nobody knew who we were. Um, so we just waited for that, those first couple of reviews to come in, let the product speak for itself. Um, and then, uh, you know, a couple of great reviews, absolutely from, from you guys and James, um, and understanding that, uh, you know, we're providing real data, real information. And that's really what you did uh, when you started the company, right? It was yeah. fact finding, finding out what's, what's there, uh, what's real, what's not. And uh, so we just let the product talk for itself. Uh, and really, from that perspective on, the rest has been history. Um, it's taken a lot of great supporters uh, you know, all over the world. Um, and uh, that's what's really put us on the map. And, you know, a long time ago, me and Dan had a conversation about, uh, I want to share data. And Dan was pretty adamant about that. And, you know, we kind of had a discussion on it. It opens up a lot of negatives. Potentially people don't understand what an anechoic measurement is, what it looks like, what it means. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, you know, the industry really hasn't done that. Commercial audio has done it for 40 years, um, but high-end audio hasn't. And, you know, to defend high-end audio, it's a little bit about, well, people are going to misunderstand it. Um, then to also combat that as a lot of high end and audio doesn't have good measurements. It's not based on a lot of science and engineering. Um, and you know, that's what, uh, we bring and a lot of the brands you have on here bring, right. We're, we're all believe in engineering. We don't believe in, uh, real measurements. Uh, you know, we're all working towards, uh, that scientific result. There's still a lot of black art in the industry. Um, you know, we can, we can, see distortion we can measure distortion but there's some components of why does it sound better than that one they have the same distortion measurements so there's still a lot of black art but you get a really sure. good head start by doing good sound engineering and uh you know that's what we believe in and you've been a huge proponent for that so we thank you very much no i mean and just dan romer is like He's just a wealth of knowledge. Like I, I, he's been involved in so many companies prior to Perlis, and so he's a true industry vet. And to get him on our channel, just anytime we do videos with you guys, it's just it's a it's a learning experience. And I really enjoyed having him over my place to hear my systems. Um, it was it was a lot of fun before Florida Audio Expo. And I just like the way your company's going. I, you know, the the fact that you have so many SKUs, but all high quality stuff, whether it's architectural or it's box speaker and possibly some new on wall stuff coming out. I'm not going to say too much. I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag, but I know you're working on some cool Maybe. stuff. <laughs> and hopefully you go beyond the S look, the S 70 limited edition. It's a magical speaker. I really think it's not just more bass. I just think the way that speaker sounds, and it maybe it can't be quantified 100% with the measurements, but 
I am blown away every time I hear that speaker. So I would imagine if you had an S9 LE, what, what that thing will do. It makes you want to dance. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's, you know, uh, you know, Shane had mentioned that. And I think Bill had mentioned it too. It's just that dynamic range. There's, there's no replacement for it. Um, it's, and you said it as well. It's not just to play loud. It's loud with low distortion. It's yeah. those transient yeah. response when there's, you know, 15, 20 dB of peak in the music. A lot of speakers can reproduce it, but very few can reproduce it with low distortion. And uh, it's that's a different experience. We have a lot of people who listen to our speakers and saying, you know, we'll all roll our eyes at this. I've never heard that before. And what I think they actually mean is, I've never heard dynamic range like that with no distortion. And yeah. that's a little more believable that I've never heard that before. Um, you know, and that's something that very few people do here is, uh, you know, having the right around of amps, electronics with a dynamic range paired with a speaker has dynamic range. And that's a different experience and it can make your experience really uh, much different than you ever had before. So that's, that's cool. And look, so you did it. Partners as well, right? And it's, yeah. Yeah, and you did it without using a compression driver. So you did it with regular cone or dome tweeters. You did it in such a way where you have 120 dB kind of output without having to use a big compression driver. Which I'm not bashing big compression drivers, but there's a time and place for them. Some people prefer not to use compression drivers, especially in small theaters, home theaters. Yeah, and from our perspective, that was about uh, you know. We didn't like compression drivers per se as a, a side qual uh, sound quality high end type of driver. And so we chose, well, how do we get there? And, uh, you know, how do we get there with a standard type of tweeter design? One, make it really efficient. That's kind of obvious. Uh, but also waveguide design. And then also the, the start of the beam forming, the DPC array and the passive beam forming that we do using three drivers and a small band. And uh, all of that kind of technology, the directivity control, the wide horizontal, a lot of those kind of things that we do is a little bit different, um, you know, made a difference and, and got us to where we wanted to be in the end result. Yep. Awesome. Well, I'm going to put the next question up, guys, to, because we still have some more prizes. So here is the next question. And it's not showing up. Hold on a second. I can't find it. There's like too many comments coming in. Okay, here it is. So what is your favorite article or video from Audioholics? Now, like I said, we started this website in 99. So I'm curious to see how far back you guys will go. I think we started YouTube around 2010, but I didn't get on YouTube until 2014. I had other people doing it for us. So if you have a favorite video, I don't know if it's the bouncy house video or something like that <laughs> give, give, or, or Don in my video on the bows. I mean, that was another classic. So give yeah, us your favorite great. article or video and we will pick some winners on that. Subwoofer Crawl is one of mine. Subwoofer Crawl is one of your favorites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to thank you, Eric, for contributing here and I'm going to bring on some more guests and I think we're out of space. So Phil, I'm going to have to kick you off, my friend. <laughs> Hey, no party, problem. Party is such sweet sorrow. Oh, Garn, you did, yeah. Forgot. Yeah. It's not goodbye. It's until later. Oh, we will be back. <laughs> we will be back. Probably. Good. Hey, congratulations. Appreciate all the work you're, you and your crew is all doing. It's just, uh, it's just making this hobby better for all of us. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, man, Phil. Phil. It's awesome that we see you. All right. See you, all right, Phil. See you. Thank you. All right. Mark. So we need to bring on. Franco. <laughs> Franco. Franco. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Yo, I'm good. How's everybody out? Are you know, I'm on the long call. Is this the Lift the Holics live stream or no? Yes, we need to help James Larson, man. He's got to lift 90 pound speakers. How how should he do it with proper core? Oh, you should you should lift with your back and use Rapid jerking <laughs> motions. <laughs> no, not how to make love. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so okay, your yeah. real name is Steve. We call you Franco because you call me Arnold when we go to the gym. But 
Steve, you are a beast, man. You are a yep. freaking beast. You gave me a run for my money when we went to the gym. You killed me. Well, thanks, man. I'm glad. It was a great workout. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time that you guys spent with me when I was down in Tampa. Dude, my bench went up since I since I met you. <laughs> I thought you told me that you were losing strength. I was until I met you. Now it's going back up. Yeah. Liftaholics, 25 <laughs> years. Yeah. MNN. <laughs> MNN is the secret. Yeah, that shit's working, MNN. man. Yeah. yeah. That stuff works. So why don't you talk? <laughs> we should talk about how we met. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want sure. me to say it or do you want to say it? You, I think you do a better job, right? <laughs> <laughs> you just don't want to. You just don't want to get in trouble on camera. <laughs> oh no, that can't happen. I'll, I'll never forget it. <laughs> so we we're at Audio Device Live. It was last summer, right? And the elevator was pretty crowded. And Don kept coming up to me, dude. You got to go check out Cambridge Audio, man. They they have they have booze. They have good sound. I'm like, shit, I'll, I'll go, but I'm like so busy trying to cover videos. Oh, and you, gotta go. you gotta go cover Cambridge Audio. You gotta meet this dude, Steve, man. He's awesome. You gotta meet him. So I'm getting in the elevator. I'm like, fine, Don, I'll go see Cambridge Audio. We're getting in the elevator and it's pretty crowded. And I see Steve. I saw him a couple of times. I didn't want to say anything because it looked like he, would, he could kill you with one punch. <laughs> so I just kind of observed him. And this dude comes out of the elevator. He must be 6'5" big head of red hair and as he's leaving i'm like was that carrot top and the whole elevator started just going crazy right Everybody, he was carrot top with he was yeah. carrot top dude he was freaking carrot top so then you and i start talking and then and then i realized you were steve from cambridge audio that don told me i need to go meet <laughs> and amazing. dude like met you instantly we became friends like it's just one of those kind of relationships when you meet someone you know you're going to be friends for life yep I absolutely agree with that. It was it was a good time. We had a, you know, out of all the places to be able to meet, right? Right. <laughs> <An> audio <laughs> show. <laughs> their, their, their room didn't look like your typical sound room. They had a pair of Kef Metas and the amazing, phenomenal Evo 150 um, streaming app and a bunch of artwork and like cool British stuff. And they were pouring drinks and hanging out and laughing and and weren't talking about nerdy stuff. I mean, it was a, it was, I'm like, this is, the, these people get it. They get yeah. the whole experience. We did right? much of the same at Expona this time, too. And, you know, I think everybody cool. was a little shocked when you walk, when they walk in and they go, hey, would you like a beer? <laughs> Want a drink? Yeah. Some people would say, you know, is it really afternoon yet? I said, well, head office is in London. So it's yeah. been afternoon all day, right? Yeah. <laughs> But so Steve group, man, is just great. What I love about uh, Cambridge Audio is just, you know, you guys are bringing really nice looking products to market, you know, performing products, but they don't cost an arm and a leg, right? Your, your products cost less than most of the cables at those shows. Yes, absolutely. Right. So high value products, you know, punching way above the weight class, you know, and, um, you know, all of our stuff. I mean, we really sit and listen to it before we send it out right i mean because not always is there a perfect match right you know you have to really listen to the combinations of what you're putting together before you release a new product or anything and um yeah i mean so anybody who's had the chance to be able to listen to a lot of our gear i mean they're shocked i mean we have a little 35 watt per channel integrated amplifier you know it's it's built like a brick house you could say shit. Uh, we're just amazed. <laughs> <laughs> I, can I love bridge houses, you know. And uh, yeah, so we really try to be able to, and our critical thinking is is that we are a real critical step, right? It, should we provide a product that really doesn't fit the customer's needs or really doesn't exceed their expectations? we could possibly lose them for the rest of the audio industry. And that's not something that we want to do. So we really want to make sure that our products really do perform that when people get them home and they take them out of the box, they go, wow, it even sounds better at home. I agree. Well, you sent me a integrated amp. I forgot which one I have. I'm looking at that. I have no box yet. <laughs> which one did you send me? Cause it's I'm going to bench test it. DeLorean. Yep, I mean, let me just say that limited production, limit uh, Evo DeLorean. 
It's one of our yeah. all-in-one units, integrated amp and a streaming unit built in. Look, you're not going to you're not going to come to my house and beat me up if I if I bench test it and it doesn't do and it doesn't do great, are you? Well, you know, we've already done a little bit of that in advance, <laughs> 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 so I know it bench as well. But it definitely sounds great. What do you think, Don? Um, dude, I told you earlier today of, of all, and I've tested a bunch of integrated amps, and for three thousand dollars or twenty nine ninety nine ninety nine retail. The Evo 150 is a miracle product. It does everything. It's got eARC. It's Rune ready. It does MQA. Um, they have their own really good streaming app. It's got uh, two phono inputs, auxiliary inputs on it. Um, it's it's what can I say? It's super easy to use. It takes like two minutes to set up, and I'm driving some pretty hefty speakers with it, and it drives the shit out of them. Sorry, <laughs> but it, it it's. Yeah, what do you have? The dollies? You're gonna love it, Gene. Yeah, you're gonna Gene, Gene, you're gonna absolutely love that amp. Like I fell in love with it. I mean, there's a lot of great integrated streaming amps out now, but we're talking about the renaissance now with the class D and getting high quality DAX and really an entire audio system and a little like a bigger than a lunchbox, a little bit. I mean, it's amazing. So I can't wait for you to listen to it and test it, Gene. It's it awesome. Yeah, Hypex amps on it. Oh yeah, I know Hypex is good. So Bruno, oh well done. Yeah, it's, it's it's a it's a miracle product, man. It can't measure bad unless you screwed up the reference design. <laughs> and yeah. you got the DeLorean, which is a really pimped out looking one, man, with with little view meters on it and stuff. So it's cool. Sweet. Speaking of Cambridge, we have two products that you guys are giving away. One is the MN MXN ten. And then the DAC Magic 200, right? Are those? Yes. So why don't you explain each of those products? What's an MXN10, and what's a DAC? So an MXN10 is one of our little compact, you know, or office size, office space streaming units, right? Right. Runs just about everything out there, whether it's you know, Rune Ready, uh, Cobuzz, AirPlay, you know. Just about anything that you want to be able to connect to, you're going to be able to use whatever your type of music function is. And then our DAC Magic 200, which is also has a uh, a headphone amp built into it. Oh, the Teo has Teo has them. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. How'd you like them, Teo? Let me tell you, I love my Cambridge audio stuff. This yeah. stuff is great. And you know that on the show where I said the stuff that I own, Cambridge Audio CXN V2. So this is that in a little package. It's great. Yeah. And he means that because he, he he told me that a couple of times in phone conversations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and DAC Magic, what a great name. <laughs> You know, and it, it's funny when you when you're out talking to some high end dealers, and one of the few products that they start off with is one of our streaming units, and they talk about DAC Magic, and they go, "Man, for the money, that thing really sounds good, right?" And you know, I mean, they're selling some pretty high end stuff out there these days, but you know, we packed yeah. a lot of punch, and we got a great reputation. Well, Probably I picked a winner. I picked the winner for the MXN 10 and it's swirling dragon mist. Bro, my favorite articles is the 10 different speaker cables Whoa. compared. Those are those graphs are straight fire. You're talking way back. I did that back in maybe 2002 when I was still working at it for a defense contractor. So that's awesome that you've been with us that long, or maybe you discovered it after that. But yeah, I used to take in all the cables, including AudioQuest. And uh, actually, no, I didn't measure AudioQuest, they wouldn't send me a cable. But I measured like Goertz, I measured all these esoteric brands. Some of them aren't even in existence anymore. And then I compared it to 10 gauge um, Home Depot lamp cord. And we did all the different comparisons on that. So those those articles got a lot of traffic, a lot of attention, got a lot of hate from some of the high end companies. But yeah, I mean, it's it's it was fun doing that. I learned a lot from that experience. So. So Swirling Dragon Mist, you are a regular. I see you all the time on our Patreon, and I see you on the comments. Send me an email at info at audioholics.com. Make sure you use the email address you registered for this event and put your YouTube handle on it, and you will get the MN or MXN10. Appreciate that. 
And then for the DAC Magic, let's see. I mean, I hate to use another cable article, but I really respect the fact that people have been looking at these old articles. Oh, yeah, you already won. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you for reminding me of that. Let's see. Okay, so here we are with Neon Mojo, the NAD M23 Master Series Stereo Amplifier Test Report. Helped to bring attention to how great modern class D amplifiers have Killer. become. Killer, I appreciate man. that comment, Neon. You will email me at info at audiohawks.com and you will get that DAC Magic 200. So that review was a difficult one for me because I had to redo my test fixture. That's how low the distortion was in that amplifier. And I actually had to make up all new cables and I had to change my resistors. Like when you use resistors that, that have any bit of inductance or the contacts are not good on them, when you're that deep into the noise floor of the equipment, you will see, you know, spurs that aren't supposed to be there. And it took me a while because I knew what that amplifier should do because I know Bruno Putzies very well. And he sent me his measurements on their test module. And it took me a while to match it. And even though I came within tenths of a dB, we're talking to the thousands place of the decimal point to the right of it to get to that level of distortion accuracy, it was the limit of my test gear. So that pushed the limit of my test gear to measure that. So I appreciate you bringing that up as your favorite article for us because I put a lot of effort into that one. And I think, Teo, you have a pair of those configured in mono. I do. You do why don't you talk a second about what you're doing with that? So I have the NAD M66 uh, pre-pro, stereo pre-pro in. It has quad subwoofer outputs and it has Dirac Live. And then I have two of those M23s that I'm putting into bridge mode connected to my Revel Ultima 2 salons. So they theoretically are putting out 1.2 kilowatts into the four ohm uh, load of the salon twos. I will simply tell you, it is some of the best two-channel sound I've had out of the salons. It's just great. Awesome. And you didn't smoke the amps in the process, right? No, nope, I haven't <laughs> smoked them yet. <laughs> That's your job. I'm driving them with uh, with quad perlicens, D212Ss. Oh, there so, you go, Eric. There you go. Uh, pretty impressive. And then I've also got my SVS SB16 as well. So I want to give a nod to SVS for their incredible subwoofers as well. So the best of breed products here and RBH. I got everybody. I got the whole family. You got the gambit. Yeah. Look, we, we look for the best companies to work with. You know, there's, there's yep. a lot of brands we work with. Unfortunately, I couldn't have everybody on the live stream, but I feel honored to be working with some of the people that are here right now because you guys are great folks and your companies make incredible products. And the fact that I get access to your engineers to send my test reports to fact check, that's the kind of stuff I love to do. Talking about reports, is a question that keeps popping up about James and what speakers he's got in the background. Oh, yeah, James. Why don't you quickly say we covered this in another. I don't think I published that video yet. I may not have published that video, but why don't you talk about what those oh, are? That's just kind of like background stuff, you know, be thematic with our, you know, uh, YouTube thing. Um, this is OK. Wait, this is the uh, reference speaker that Dennis Murphy made for us. Um, it's a yep. really, uh, uh, just a uh, really awesome two channel speaker. I probably shouldn't even put it up here because you can't buy it. It's a custom made speaker from Dennis. You're Bruce. teasing the audio files. <laughs> yeah, I got what you can't get. <laughs> Sorry, kids. Um, and this, <laughs> this is a speaker. I, uh, we did a, it was a pretty good, uh, a lot, got a lot of traffic, a uh, DIY kit from Parts Express um, called the Orions. It's a three-way, it's a coaxial driver. Um, I, I, sorry, I, like coaxial driver and a 10-inch uh, bass driver, really killer um, speaker. But you can, we have a, a YouTube ar a video about that and an article, a review of yeah. that kit. Yeah, so you can look that up. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry to be distracting, Gene. I just, you know, was trying to be thematic here. No, you got it, man. You got it. <laughs> Yeah, the attention there. <laughs> so we have, let's see, we have one more guest to bring on. So I got to boot somebody. Who wants to volunteer to leave? I can go. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have to draw. All right, between Nick, Eric, and Franco, guess Ross a number Ferguson. between. Guess a number between one and six. If you get it right, you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, six. Four. Three. Who said, said, four? Who three. said three? 
Three. I said four. You're gone, Franco. <laughs> you have been, you have been terminated. <laughs> Lucky number three. Everybody have a wonderful night. Talk to you guys soon. I really you. Thank you, Pete, Later, man. Steve, man. You're awesome. You're awesome, dude. Yeah, that, that dude just really gets in the whole great. business. He's just wonderful. Have a great All night, right. guys. All right, you it. too, buddy. Let me bring on. You guys have to be ready because this guy is full of energy. <laughs> we need it. We need it's it. It's going to be the Zach attack from Drew. Zach full of energy? I've never heard that description <laughs> about him ever. What's going on, guys? What a special event. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. 25 years. Wow, man. Thank it's incredible. You. Were you even born when I started? Three. He was three. <laughs> 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 Yeah, pretty pretty young. You're a legend, man. I'm just glad to be a part of all this. No, it's awesome having you, man. man. So, so people may not realize, but Zach came over my house last year. He's like, we're going to shoot some videos at your house. Yeah. I know you're a late person, so I'll go on your schedule. I'll shoot them. We'll come at night. I'm like, okay, whatever. I figured late would be he'd be done at 1 o'clock in the morning. Zach didn't leave my house till 7.30 in the morning. He shot about 20-something videos. He drank three five-hour energy drinks. He was <laughs> Wore me out. Yeah. Yeah, we did it, Gene. We did it. I, I came out in the morning, and I was shocked. Uh, the car was full of dew, and, uh, but we did it. We knocked it out of the park. Yeah, you were you're a, a whippersnapper, man. That's the best way I could describe you. You got to you got to go and take Bertha to Zach's place because it's the most beautiful. It's like heaven, literally heaven. Yeah, Denver. Right? I want to take yeah. a train there. I want to do some sightseeing on the way there. Yeah, we had some fun, Don. It was yeah, uh, nice that. having you up we here. Stayed up. <laughs> the morning was interesting. <laughs> so, so Zach, talk about how you found Audioholics and you know what kind of um, like what brought you here. Yeah, so um, let me think. I obviously I've heard about you guys since day one. You know, I've been in the industry now almost 12 years is when we started the business and I've seen your reviews um, and have always kind of like Don said earlier in the live stream, have used uh, some of those reviews as examples to help customers make an educated buying decision. So I've always been a fan uh, of Audioholics and I think our relationship just organically happened because Dream Media started out as a custom integration company down in Texas, Dallas, Houston, Austin, San Antonio. And I expanded and now we're a national retailer and through our growth, um, I think it was just destiny, right? Yeah. So um, whenever, you know, we got connected, um, I was absolutely thrilled to be a part of the team and kind of the rest is history. I think we're honestly just in the beginning phases, though. We've done some great things these last couple of years and I'm excited for the future. Yeah, no doubt, man. We, you know, we're like I said, we're restructuring the website. We want to bring a network of dealers together that can help people do installs. And Zach, you're going to be a big part of that. We're going to, you know, you're going to be doing consultations through Audioholics. We're going to be sending you some leads for that because I can't like answer everybody's questions, right? And it's it's good to have someone that you can trust that um, can help people not only do equipment purchasing but actually getting it integrated into their systems. Yeah, absolutely. We're kind of unique. Um, so all of your subscribers um, can reach out to us and immediately in a video consultation, not only receive expert advice on what products may work for their space, but we create full blown system designs to really make sure that we're recommending the perfect equipment for every single location, whether it's a crazy dedicated home cinema we've been doing crazy half a million dollar projects on just cinema rooms um and working with uh, here coming up shortly we're going to be announcing our partnership with anthony gramani gramani systems and you know matt pose also works with that team so we are really like pushing the limits of how high end we can go on these dedicated home cinema rooms and we even just did a live stream a couple hours ago with just video walls who is kind of breaking the mold on micro led technology and we're configuring those in a, a bunch of different configurations that's industry leading and i feel the future of 
home theater, but also for just your average display in a living room, family room situation, especially when you have huge windows. But we do whole house audio. We do um, outdoor systems. I just showed off a 178 inch TV coming out from behind an infinity edge pool with the uh, oh, wow. in, inside of the ground. Uh, so the AstroTurf goes down and sitting on top of the TV and the TV just completely right. disappears into the floor. So everything from that to just, you know, a pair of stereo speakers. Um, I'm really excited to be partnered with you guys and be a channel sponsor to deep dive into two channel hi-fi. It's actually interesting uh, because of my age, I never got to experience two channel hi-fi. I would just immediately was thrown into HDMI. We were ripping out component cables, putting HDMIs in and the home theaters just kept getting crazier and crazier and crazier over the years. And now, I feel like I'm missing out. So I want to get that nostalgic well, feeling. You remember, grab you, remember when you, you remember when you sat in my theater room and you got to listen to two channel and you were, the stuff you were saying to me was just awesome because tell ex, ex, describe what you heard when you listened to the RBH SVTRS system, just in two channel in the theater room. Just the level of detail and clarity. I mean, uh, anybody who's subscribed to our channel hears me just raving about RBH. I mean, I don't know any other company that makes a wide range of speakers. That's an, another important thing to note with RBH um, is every single model that we need to build these complex systems is available because not we can't always put a bookshelf or a tower or we need on walls, we need in ceilings, we need in walls, we need a, a wide variety of options to choose from to fit the application and those AMT tweeters just scream. I mean, I didn't get any listening fatigue. I mean, we could have sat there literally all night and I just would have been in heaven. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, you were working me like a dog. <laughs> I think it was the other way around. But what, what, what impressed me is what you said was that you actually thought the center channel was on because you heard a really strong phantom center. The and phantom center was absolutely on point. Yeah. I mean, I could not even tell. I had, we actually had to double check to make sure you had the center speaker off because it was coming through so clean. You thought I was pulling a fast one on you. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. that's what all these manufacturers do to us. They'll put us down and there will be two sets of speakers. And then they're like, what do you think? And they're like, oh, well, actually, you were listening to this. So, yeah, of course, I had to question yeah. it. But big fan of RBH and um, had an amazing listening experience. And look, when you, get, when you get a really good speaker and you got symmetry in your room so with sidewalls and you set them up right, it's magic. Like I heard the same thing with Perlison with the X7, uh, the S7Ts in my family room, even though I don't have sidewalls uh, per se, but the way that DPC array works, Eric is pretty magical. Oh, I'm and a huge Perlison fan. Yeah, and Nick, those those uh, Pinnacle Ultra Evolution Towers, same thing, man. I had an incredible experience at a trade show, so I can't wait to actually sit down in a controlled environment to spend time with those speakers. Yeah, you yeah, I think uh, a lot of differences make with the room, right, too. So people, you know, our job is, uh, you know, Shane, Nick, and Eric, and, and you know, Perliston is to not screw up the source. But a lot of people still don't think about the treatment of the room, which can take it to that next level. And the same thing with the home theater. So, you know, that's that's something that I know you talk about a lot in your channel. And it's really helpful to help people understand. Uh, you know, the best two channel experience you can get could be in a, in a home theater room because it's a dedicated space, it's acoustically controlled. You have an acoustically transparent screen. Usually you put acoustic uh, treatments behind that. You get your RT60 decay time right in that zone between, you know, three to 500 milliseconds. And it's linear across the entire bandwidth that's when you get magic. You can't do that in a, in a regular room. That's a multi-purpose room. That's a dining room and a kitchen. And it's harder. It's a lot harder to get that. Kind of We're stuff. finding that more and more, Gene, a lot of our customers are still two channel fanatics, but they want to experience immersive audio, you know, Dolby Atmos with the effects ripping around the room. So we'll throw a, you know, kind of a statement piece for the room, so a pair of really nice towers at the front of the space with some mono blocks, but we can still throw like a Trinov um, on it and scale it to any configuration of Dolby Atmos that the customer is looking for. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh, speaking of which, Zach, you guys are donating a pair of Focal Batiste to this contest. I'm going to show yeah. a picture of that. We have the winner here. I'm going to put 
Michael, I, I don't know how to say your last name. Go Chez. I hope I'm not yeah, butchering. Those are killer, by the way. Those Batiste, they're amazing. Those so are my your personal fav- favorites for traveling. No, love them. He's got him. He's got them right there. Taylor, you're killing me, man. Like got- the oh, these no, are no. going to be in our upcoming show. These are fantastic. They are wow. wonderful. So I've got them in the uh, in the dune color. So I don't know what you're giving Ooh. away, but these are amazing. Yeah, they're yeah, they're yeah. amazing uh, headphones at a very reasonable price point. Um, but I'm in in love again. You know, I really believe in every single brand that we sell. Focal is another one that's stood behind us for years, and we're just thrilled to offer that product line. But I figured the headphones are perfect because literally anybody will enjoy that for years to come. I know on the plane, every single trade show, even uh, for a um, road trip down to Texas, I wore them in the car to kind of uh, block out some of the bluey and um, some of the children's music that was playing. So I really enjoyed that um, noise canceling effect so I could uh, (laughs) disconnect from the car, um, you know, ambient noise with my kiddos. Um, So they're they're great. You could even make phone calls with them and they got killer microphones on them. They're they're wonderful, well-made. Awesome. Let me read the uh, answer here from Michael. My favorites would be all amplifiers don't sound the same. Or when Gene came to publicly defend Aaron against Tecton online bullies, he showed he actually had our back and not a sellout. I, I appreciate that. And I don't want to get too much into that because that whole situation has been so blown out over the last couple of weeks. And I think it's kind of calmed down. But I will say this. I've been on the receiving side of, of companies coming after me and trying to stalk me online. And uh, it's not a fun experience. And when I saw that happening to a fellow YouTuber, I decided to use my platform to stand up for him to, to do what's right. And I hope if this ever happens to me again in the future, I hope it doesn't. I hope the community will have my back as well. And, and we should all have each other's backs because you know, at the end of the day, we do this for the love of what we do. We shouldn't be threatened by people if they don't like the outcome, especially when you do reviews with integrity, which Aaron does. And um, yeah, that's all I'll say about that. But Michael, if you email us from the email that you registered with, you will get the Focal Batiste. Please put your uh, YouTube name in it as well. Our email is info at audioholics.com. We appreciate that. And I can't find the comment to hide it. Let me see. Hold on a second. And we have one more prize. We got to pick one more winner because I know we're, I wanted to do this in two hours. We're already at two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those S seven T's, man. That's gonna be a great prize, right, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Little <laughs> mini three D printed one, right? <laughs> Zach, you got Zach, a shout out here. It's great. Hey, hey, thank you, Dan. I appreciate your support. Yeah, it's it's amazing the community that we have uh, from reviewers to manufacturers and customers. I mean. Just the support is is awesome. Appreciate you. Awesome. I found a really good answer to one of these questions, and I can't. There's so many comments. I should have had someone kind of manage this for me. Uh, let me see. So the, let me just tell you the next prize. The last prize, last but not least, is we have the definitive technology. It's the DN D15 subwoofer. So it has a 15 inch driver. And James, does it have two passive radiators or one? Two passive radiators. It's, it's a big sub, so you know. Nice. We remember they had four of those at Audio Vice Show that we saw. Yeah, they did. So James, yeah. give us like a one minute overview of that sub because we did a review. I think you overall like the subwoofer. Yeah, it's a really good subwoofer. Um, uh, two passive radiators, kind of a cool, uh, like a uh, what do you call it, like a LCD display in front that uh, uh, comes up through like a uh, like a like like a screen like that it, it, the finish it, okay it doesn't have a normal finish it has like that fabric that uh, surrounds all of the def- uh most of definitive technology stuff right so it's a very different subwoofer it looks really cool it sounds really good it's a very high uh high fidelity but we have the review you can read about it so but whoever wins it be prepared for a really sizable sub and it's not light either like a coffee table yeah it's it's a you could yeah you could use it as a coffee table i wouldn't want to spill anything on it but um yeah it's it's a good sub. I just read the review, you know, and be prepared for a big one. 
<laughs> Never mind. Stop. Stop. <laughs> not right. selling it. I, Tell my girlfriend all the time. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the comment winner so I could just change my mind here. <laughs> I'm sorry, so, Gene. I set you up for that. <laughs> I'm open. I'm open. Done. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> the, the, the winner to, to the D15 sub from Definitive Technology. And this is James uh, Larson's review unit. So we review it. You win it. It's actually his unit. So if there's any blemishes, because he might have, you know, when he, well, actually, you don't put it up in the ground. It's oh. a ground plane measurement. So you yeah, don't lift it up plane. at all. So it should be pretty unscathed, right? Well, I mean, I, it's, it's been around a little bit. So it might not be perfect, but it should be in pretty good condition. Pretty good sub. I think it's like $1,700. So anyways, Gaderek says his favorite article was when RBH system review was a T2 system. That's an old review from 2003. I was shocked to find a detailed review of something which I was going to buy secondhand in 2023. That's awesome. So now you could add another subwoofer to your system. Please email us at info at audioholics.com using the email address you registered for this event and also put your YouTube name. And that concludes the, um, the contest giveaway. We gave away eight prizes in two and a half hours. So I hope all of you guys enjoy these products and maybe post pictures when you get them, put them on our forum, you know, send it to us an email birthday. You love sharing that stuff on, on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys are aware, but we have a, a really thriving Facebook and Instagram, as as Teo showed in the slide presentation prior. So we we try to be pretty much everywhere on social media. We even have a Pinterest, right? Yes. I, Twitter, I, Pinterest. I, I, I barely see the Pinterest, but she manages that. And we even have a working group at Audioholics on Facebook. Audio How many people are on that one? Over 4,500. Yeah. So, I mean, this we even had a Spanish one for a while, a Spanish Facebook, but it was just too hard to maintain. So... But yeah, so that's that's pretty much a wrap. I don't know if you guys want to say anything um, as closing thoughts. I just want to again say I appreciate everybody that's involved in Audio Hawks, whether you're a content producer, you're a manufacturing partner, or a channel partner. I couldn't do it without you guys. I couldn't do it without the support of the community, with the support of my wife. And you know, this is our passion. I've been doing this for 25 years. I gave up. We both gave up our day jobs yeah. to do this. It's about nursing. Yeah, and we want to grow this thing. We want to make it more entertaining, more you know, educational. I think, Shane, um, one of the best things that someone's ever said to me in the industry was was Roger, the former owner of RBH Sound. He said, "Truth has become a marketable commodity," and that really stuck with me for years, man. Like, if you just stick with your guns and you put out real content, try to keep the fluff down to a minimum and give people the real information they'll be receptive to it. They'll keep coming back and you'll be a success. Absolutely. To the next 25 years. <laughs> I hope hey, I'm not uh, doing this in 25 years. <laughs> Gene Rich, you might be in competition for the nice guy from Kenny. He's pretty damn nice. <laughs> yeah, he is. Absolutely. Well, I think this wraps it up, guys. This is the longest live stream we've ever done. We maintained 200 people on it the whole time, so that's pretty good. I, I'm glad that we held everybody's attention this long. And, guys, I appreciate all the comments. I'm sorry I couldn't get to all of them, but there were some great comments here, and I'm really touched by the fact that there's people that have been reading this site almost since I started it 25 years ago. So that's really awesome. And there's a lot coming down the pipe. Like I said, we have a new website redesign coming. We're going to be announcing some cool stuff with Dream Media. Um, so there's just, I don't know, I'm excited. And I'm excited for the cover in the future trade shows that are coming up. And James Larson, we dumped so many products on. He's going to be busy for the next two years. And Teo, too. I overloaded you as well. <laughs> A lot of fun stuff coming here with the theater um, that we're going to be talking about. So excited about that. And we're bringing Xavier on. He's, he's the authoritative expert on turntable setup and everything analog. Xavier, we want you to do everything. Yeah, man. We want you to, on the channel covering this stuff because, like I said, you transformed my turntable. You really did. And, and I'm coming for uh, next month and we're going to do some videos at your house. So. Absolutely, my friend. Yeah. You need to get him some products to review, maybe some, you know, tube amps, integrated um, yep. turntables, various different things that we normally haven't done much of. Now we have the expertise in that category to do it. I'm actually going to go house uh in a couple of weeks to go set up his cambridge 
uh, table that he got, and then hopefully we can do a review on that. Awesome. Well, guys, that's pretty much a wrap. Um, if you like this video, please hit the thumb up, hit the, hit the subscribe. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to us if you want to suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, keep, keep listening. listening. <laughs>